Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. We are glad you are here. This is the June 14th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. And uh, we begin our meetings typically with an invocation and a pledge. And today we have the distinct honor of having Mr. Douglas Wright here, who will be doing both. He's going to lead us in the invocation and then in the pledge. And uh, just to let you know, Mr. Wright served in the United States Navy for 24 years as a yeoman who is an administrative assistant to the senior ranking officer. He served two tours at the Pentagon, and he retired as a chief petty officer in April 2008, and we're so privileged to have him here with us. So, uh, Chief, you want to lead us in all that? Let us pray. Most humble and wise God, but come before you as a humble servant, Lord God, thanking you and praising you, Lord God, for this particular day. Father God, I pray for each and every commissioner individually, and Lord God, I pray for them collectively, Lord God. Lord God, the task before them, we know it is uh, not hard for them, Lord God. They are able and they are willing to do it, Lord God. We ask you to give them discernment, we give them guidance, and give them wisdom, Lord God, for the decisions that they will be making for the citizens of Citrus County. Now, Father, lastly, I want to pray for our first responders, our men and women in uniform. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for what they do for all of our nation, Lord God. And Father, we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We need to change these flags yeah. around the table. Yeah. Yeah. I in the put pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chief. I'm going to start calling you that from now on. And I'm serious. I believe the flags are displayed improperly. We need to get that corrected, okay? <laughs> all right. Very good. Can we have a roll call, please? This is a regular meeting of the Citrus County Board of County Commissioners this 14th day of June, 2022. In attendance, Commission Chairman Ronald Kitchen, First Vice Chair Ruthie Slaybaugh, Second Vice Chair Holly Davis, Commissioners Jeff Kennard and Scott Carnahan, County Administrator Randy Oliver, and County Attorney Denise Lynn. Thank you very much. Um, I have no information for any additions or deletions from the agenda. Mr. Oliver, do you have anything? None. We have some additional information for this evening, but that's okay. it. Okay. So I'll be looking for a motion to approve the agenda. Second. So I move. So we have a um, second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Carnahan and a second by Commissioner Kennard. Okay. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. We have the consent agenda, uh, which consists of B1 through B7, I believe. Commissioners, what's your pleasure with the consent agenda? Take, uh, consent agenda in entirety. Second. second. Okay, so I heard Commissioner Carnahan on the motion, Commissioner Slaybaugh on the second. Is there any public comments on any item on the consent agenda? Commissioners, anything else to discuss? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. It passes unanimously. We will move to C1, which does not require a vote. This is a presentation. We gave uh, these fine young people a proclamation a while back about uh, working against tobacco, and they've asked to give us a short presentation today on what they're doing, so we invite them forward to do that now. Oh, hello, council members. My name is Isabel Baxter. I am president of the Citrus County Students Working Against Tobacco. Also, I am part of the Youth Advocacy Board for Tobacco Free Florida. My goal today is to take this time to share findings from our point of sale surveillance in Citrus County and to look at how we can build a healthy communities through the point of sale environment. <coughs> oh, next slide. In the United States, one through four high school students vape. According to the CDC, the use of e-cigarettes is unsafe for kids, teens, and young adults. Most e-cigarettes contain nicotine. Nicotine is highly addictive. It can harm adolescent brain development, which continues into the early to mid-20s. 
E-cigarettes contain other harmful substances besides nicotine. Young people who use e-cigarettes are more likely to smoke cigarettes in the future. Next slide. How does point of sale impact teen vaping? Well, let's look at how tobacco and retail stores position products to create a familiarity and popularity of their products. Through tobacco self-servants displays, tobacco lookalike products such as gum and candy, providing free samples, tobacco products or ads near youth-oriented displays such as movies and candy, fun flavors and colors that catch and draw the eye of young consumers. Next slide. All these strategies are designed to recruit new tobacco users. The Tobacco Powerwall, oh, next slide. Yeah. The Tobacco Powerwall is the wall behind most cash registers that displays an array of tobacco and nicotine products in a way that attracts new customers. These walls can impact adolescent perception of the normalization of cigarettes. All the pictures, oh, next slide. All the pictures in our presentation were taken in Citrus County this year. As you can see, ice cream positioned next to a box of cigarettes ready for anyone to grab. Also, vape products above chips. Next slide. In these pictures, you see tobacco not behind the counter and within two feet on the floor. Next up is Ivy Baxter. Um, oh yeah, next slide please. Placing these products, oh, hello. Hi. Oh, I think it's in um, the next slide, please. Maybe if you stand a little closer to the microphone, you'll be able to hear a little better too. Hello, my name is Ivy Baxter, and today I'll be talking about product placement and point of sale. Placing these tobaccos within cotton candy and toys normalizes tobacco and creates a damaging familiarity for young people. Next slide, please. We include this slide to show you that in many stores, nothing has changed. Tobacco placement in many stores is not serving our community, but marketing to young people at all costs. Next slide, please. What we can do. Currently, there is no business license required to sell vape products in Citrus County. At the local level, Citrus County needs to require that new and existing businesses must have a license before they're allowed to sell e-cigarette products. Licensing enables the governing body to maintain a current and comprehensive list of businesses that sell this form of tobacco. Next slide, please. This would provide many benefits to our community, such as a vaping retail license would allow for the suspension of a store's license for violating regulations. It also increases the likelihood that retailers will adhere to regulations. The greater consequence than a fine which some retailers may view as the cost of doing business. Next slide, please. The need for more regulation is apparent when you consider that only six out of 91 stores meet the standards set by counter tools for retail compliance. Next slide, please. Currently, the retail environment, or points of sale, is currently the primary venue where tobacco companies market their products in the United States. Exposure to tobacco advertisements, which blanket retail stores in Citrus County, has been shown to increase initiation and continuation of tobacco use, especially among youth. Across multiple studies, research has shown that more frequently exposed to tobacco promotion, youth are 60% more likely to have tried smoking and 30% more likely to be susceptible to future smoking. In addition, exposure to tobacco marketing at the point of sale fosters positive brand imagery and distorts youth perceptions about the availability, use, and popularity of tobacco products. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. We appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Okay, at this time we will open um, to the public. Uh, is there anyone that wishes to address the board? on issues of concern to you. And again, I'll remind you, three minutes per person, five minutes for an organization if you have a letter on file with the clerk stating you have the authority of your group to do so. And before, during, or after, if you'd fill out a green card for the clerk, we'd appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. You've got the card. My name's Bud Osborne, and I'm not gonna speak on Sir Toma today. We we'll talked about Too Far. A while back, Too Far came to you, asked for your support, 
and going to Tallahassee for money for lake restoration. We had the city of Inverness also backing us. And with that kind of support, we were successful. We got our money, and we want to thank you. That's all. Thank you. Sir. Good morning. William Grant on behalf of uh, East Citrus United Soccer. Uh, folks, this is going to be pretty brief. Uh, I tried to contact, I've spoke to most of you about this. Uh, there's an issue with, uh, there's purported to be an issue with Florida Youth Soccer and its endorsement of the East Citrus United Soccer Club and the fields on agenda item Edward 10 on your agenda. I want to be very clear that while there may be a uh, concern by uh, two or three people that have contacted, have family, uh, Manuel Cambre, uh, people in the, org in the county government, uh, there is no dispute as to the righteousness of the organization. I come before you because I'm familiar with audits. Uh, in fact, I'm very familiar with this. Some representations were made to some of you that this organization had not filed its federal income taxes. Uh, all these documents have been available from 2018, 19, 20, and 21 with its extension. Financial reports have been filed. Uh, are available and have been available to other people. I want to make sure that you know that these are those complete records that they indicate it may not exist that do exist. Financial records that were provided, minutes that were provided, bank statements, and actual copies of checks by the year. So let me just say this. I don't like it. I was involved in one of the most harrowing uh, county disputes of our time when neighbors complained and fought with one another and we were reticent when we saw each other at Winn-Dixie or Publix. That is the situation, obviously, sometimes in amateur sports. But let's not lose the one thing. You're never going to fire the athletes. The athletes stay forever. Those children that play soccer on those fields will be there forever, long after we are gone. Coaches get fired, administrators lose in elections. We're going to hold an election in 45 days. I'm going to monitor that election at East Citrus. Those things that were brought to you by third parties can be dispelled. There are no issues. There are no issues. There are no issues. These issues about taxing and tax exempt. I have letters here from the IRS. Their tax exempt status is righteous and it's good. All those records will be available. I encourage you to enter into those three contracts this afternoon for all of those children to continue playing. If the adults are going to fuss, let them fuss. I have experience with amateur athletics from the Olympic Games all the way down to children at three and four and five years old wrestling. I understand amateur athletics. I was the longest serving chairman of Florida wrestling, I think for almost 15 years until it was somebody else's turn. Amateur athletics, we don't, we don't, it's not an ownership. We don't vest ourselves. It's for the children. So I implore you to go forward with that today. Um, I believe that Mr. Gar uh, some of those folks are withdrawing their complaints or indicating otherwise. Uh, this is not a place where we come here to dispute these issues. East Citrus is an amateur Thank organization. You. Thank it you has much. been for many years. It will continue to service the young people. Thank you. Can you put the buzzer on, please? It's on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you. Really Thank you. <laughs> come on to the next speaker, please. More trouble. Chairman Charles Lee, Director of Advocacy of Audubon, Florida. I've given each of you and also the county attorney and, and county administrator a copy of a document. I'll just show it to you. Uh, this is a, a document that we've prepared uh, responsive to the tentative action you took at your workshop recently on the Northern Turnpike Extension. I want to applaud you for the direction you are going in general with regard to your position on the Northern Turnpike. Uh, I think that your leadership in calling out the unacceptability of the uh, southern corridor, the central corridor, and northern alternate B as they currently are configured uh, is, a, is, a, is a step in leadership that needed to be taken, and I thank you for that. Um, we've made some recommendations for changes to the draft resolution, and we would hope that between now and the next meeting, uh, you would take a look at those and consider them. We do not believe that your current draft of a resolution, which seems to endorse alternate A, is a good thing to do. 
we think that you should ask the Florida Department of Transportation more generically to look at other alternatives, but not seem to give endorsement to alternate A. One of the reasons for that is alternate A, the longest route, has the greatest environmental impact. It takes out two and a half miles of a linear path across the Halapata Tastanaka Preserve owned by Southwest Florida Water Management District. It crosses through the Cross Florida Greenway. It skirts along the eastern edge of Gothi State Forest. It will take out actual parcels of conservation land at the eastern edge of Gothi, and more importantly, it will serve as a very strong impediment against prescribed fire management of Gothi State Forest. Alternate A has serious environmental problems. We would hope it would not appear that Citrus County would end up seeming to endorse it, and you can avoid that simply by changing some words in your draft resolution to speak more generically to the concept that DOT ought to look at other alternatives and continue the process that way. Finally, I want to say something about I-75. Uh, everybody who has driven I-75 knows it is the most serious transportation problem in Florida. That's true for commerce, it's true for tourists, it's true for travelers and passenger vehicles. I-75 is fixable. It is fixable in the same way that Interstate 4 has been fixed with the I-4 Ultimate Project. It is fixable in the same way that the Selman Expressway has been fixed in Tampa. And it is fixable in the same way that the Central Florida Expressway Authority is about to launch a $400 million project to double deck a section of State Road 414 in Seminole and Orange Counties. Uh, the problem with I-75 is that it tries to serve too many masters. The through traffic from Georgia to Florida and vice versa is not what is causing the jams on I-75. And if you turn to the sec to the page uh, that has a picture of the clogged traffic that I took the other day on I-75, and look at the slide on the bottom. This is a study that FDOT did in 2016. Now, some of the aggregate numbers will have changed. The ratios will not have changed. And what they found when they looked at origin and destination on I-75 was that the big problem is in Ocala, and the big problem is in Gainesville where the traffic flow literally doubles because people are trying to use it as a local expressway in addition to the through traffic coming from Florida and Georgia. The way to solve that is twofold. One, proceed with the current plans DOT has to add two new outside lanes to I-75. That study's in progress now. But secondly, for the future, you've got to go far beyond that. And the way to go beyond that is in areas of the countryside where you can slightly expand the right of way, you add interior toll lanes like they did on I-4 Ultimate. When you get to the constrained part of I-75 in urban Ocala and urban Gainesville, two sections, interestingly, ironically, coincidentally, each 17 and a half miles long, 35 miles total, the only way to add the capacity the future will need is to go up. Can and we've Mr. Given Lee, the, your time has expired. We've given, we've given the examples of how and where your, that's being done. Your time has expired. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you'll take a look at this. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? I'll remind the speakers to watch the clock in front of you so you know how much time you have left, okay? Good afternoon. I am Barbara Wheeler with Mid-Florida Homeless Coalition, and I'm here to talk about affordable housing. I saw that that was going to be a topic of, of your um, committee today, or, and I wanted to come and share with you some information. Affordable housing in Citrus County is not a new issue. Uh, over 15 years ago, the United Way did a study, and at that time, the citizens indicated that affordable housing was one of the highest priorities for the community and things hit and citrus 2020 and citrus i think it was 20 which whichever the next one was that the, they held um, also identified affordable housing as a continued issue not just for um, looking at 
maintaining Citrus County, but looking at growth as well. And recently, I don't know if you've been watching the rents increase, but according to the Herald, along with Rent Hub, there has been between 2020 and 2022 a 43.8% increase in rent. This county doesn't have a cap on increasing in rents, and the rents just keep going higher. Right now, based on our data today, 272 persons and 166 households are currently homeless. The number is not going down. It is definitely going up. We were awarded additional funds during uh, the whole COVID in order to keep people in housing and to get people back into housing. But I can tell you that our biggest challenge right now is rehousing those on a fixed income. These are some of our most vulnerable population. In the last year, Citrus County has had 163 people, 55 and older, who are on a fixed income, homeless. 45% of them have an income of $808 a month. 39% of them have an income of $1,228 a month. The average rent in Inverness is $850 a month for a one bedroom. We cannot find housing for these folks. We don't have solutions. And I can tell you that our staff works very hard in trying to find housing throughout Citrus County to meet the needs, and we're just not finding it. Housing that is affordable is considered 30% of someone's income. So even someone making a minimum wage at this point cannot afford a unit in Citrus County. So I know that there's a lot of discussion about, you know, what do we do with affordable housing? And it's not, there are no easy solutions. If there would be, that there'd be people a lot smarter than I that are coming to the table with solutions across the United States. This is a national issue, but I need you to understand that there is an issue here in Citrus County and it continues to grow. And we really don't know how to get people back in housing without affordable housing. I also sit on the Citrus County, Citrus County's Affordable Housing Committee and have for 15 some years. And in the last few years, we've had more and more senior citizens coming to the table, explaining to us that they need help. And I'm just here on their behalf, as well as all of the, the residents that are struggling at this point, saying we can't afford housing. And they're giving up everything that they can just to keep a roof over their head. We can't do it alone. We're just asking for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak at this time? Yes, yes sir. Hi, my name is Ron Kearse. Um, I'm here today uh, to address uh, item number E10. It's the United, uh, it's the soccer <coughs> leases. Um, I'm here today as a concerned parent. My kids play out at uh, Citrus United in Inverness. Um, I've got, uh, like I said, six of my seven children have participated in sports at Citrus United. Two of my boys ref, four kids play soccer. So we're very vested in the Citrus United program. Uh, my wife was gonna be here today. Uh, she made a lot of arrangements. Um, she can't be here, but she made arrangements to be here on the 27th. Uh, that's when we were uh, initially told that the, um, uh, this uh, item would be on the agenda, but however uh, late yesterday we were informed that it would be today. So I'm here and I wanna just let you know uh, some of my observations of Citrus United Soccer. Uh, I heard what Mr. Grant said. Um, some of those documents are some of the things that we've been requesting from the board and have been unable to get them. Um, if he in fact has those documents, I'd like to take a look at them. Um, if he in fact is going to hold an open meeting on, in 45 days, um, I'm asking the board consider holding off on the lease and signing those leases with Citrus United for Holden Field until that meeting. Um, uh, has been, and the, or I'm saying that meeting has been held and the results of that meeting uh, are in your hand because I think there's some due diligence that needs to be done um, as far as Citrus United Soccer is concerned. Um, I don't want to talk about a lot of those uh, financial stuff that are in those documents that we've requested and haven't been given. Um, and when I say we, I'm talking about a concerned group of parents that made a request in accordance with um, Florida Statute 617 and that's what guides nonprofits. Um, 
members, which are the coaches, can request documents and financial information, board meeting minutes, results of elections. That's what we requested. We had a lawyer request that for us because um, we knew that uh, it's, it's pretty hard to get documents from them. Um, at the end of the day, I want to talk about the lease from last year, the 21 and the, the, the 22 season. We observed several things out there that were contrary to the lease. They had vendors out there um, that, that uh, were on the premises without approval of, of, of the county. They were selling, they were concession vendors. Um, two members of the Citrus United Board of Directors actually own a business that sells merchandise. Um, they weren't approved by the county to sell that merchandise there. Um, the conditions at this facility during one of the tournaments, it, they were very bad. Um, the league didn't pay the county uh, workers the overtime to collect trash and clean the bathrooms. It left a very unfavorable impression on a lot of soccer clubs that traveled up here from Pasco County and Hernando County. Um, the other thing is that the concession stand, and it's in accordance with the bylaws, is a for-profit. Uh, none of those... Um, Proceeds have been returned to Citrus United. Um, we only had one. Sir, um, excuse me, your time has expired. Okay. I need you to. Right. So, in conclusion, I just Thank want you. to ask that the board hold off on signing the lease with Citrus United Thank you. until the 45 day meeting when we have open and fair elections. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can we have the next speaker, please? Good afternoon, Commissioner Sabrina Watson Lacanto. Um, I'm here today to speak on behalf of some of the concerned citizens of Citrus County with regard to the sheriff's budget. I would like to remind people that the sheriff is an elected official, also known as a politician, with a budget that comes from the citizens. At the Club 45 meeting, the sheriff stated, quote unquote, we're in trouble. I'm not sure what kind of trouble we're in. He's using stats from state and national and not local stats in his budget. He also stated, quote, unquote, he's going to be transparent, 100% accountable, as Ron Kitchen said. He's asking for marine boats like, quote, unquote, the Border Patrol has, and tow boats. There are two companies on the water that tow boats currently. Why would we need a tow boat? That water is also served by the FWC and the Coast Guard. Are we going to ram boats in the blue water area now while people are swimming? Are armored tanks next? Were you transparent, Sheriff, and accountable when, the, when you gave yourself what appears to be a 22% raise in this budget? Our spreadsheet of the entire state shows that his salary is in line. The numbers in this budget are millions of dollars off from ghost employees to elusive funds that are not attached to any accounts. Our team is currently combing this budget and will provide a comprehensive report to the Board of County Commissioners and the public prior to the July meeting. I am openly asking the Sheriff to respond to questions submitted with the transparency and accountability he is touting. He is here to serve the citizens of Citrus County and his budget should reflect Citrus County needs, not a border town. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next speaker, if there is one. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Brian Timbasco. I'm the president of Advanced Aluminum, Tad Homes, and CNG Gutters. We'd like to think that we're an affordable housing contractor. However, due to regulations and environment of our economy, it's become very hard to build a single family home under $180,000. That's a reality. And that's only with $2,000 worth land costs. However, cost to build a multifamily subsidized housing has proven to cost more than $200,000 per unit. Just the word subsidized housing sometimes make us all cringe. Why? Because it's subsidized. Our county needs workers and housing for those hard workers that do, that do not want subsidized housing so that we will bring workers into the area. It is possible to build a single family dwelling less than the cost of multifamily, then why aren't we concentrating in this direction? Hardworking people, which this county needs, want to live the American dream of home, home ownership, and they will work hard for it. Subsidized housing will bring subsidized people not looking for work. This American dream has been diminished by our land development code, and which has been changed for the rural mobile home residential code stating that you must now have 20 acres to subdivide into 10-acre lots. Our previous planners planted 
plotted many five acre plots within this rural home zone that developers, builders, and other subcontractors divided into <coughs> parcels smaller than that to make affordable housing. That's not happening anymore in our county. There's many five acre lots out there that could be built into 10 or, or so available lots for working housing. They can afford a half acre lot, not a five acre lot to build a house on. We are suggesting the commissioners reevaluate the land ordinance and the rural home mobile code and allowing many planned urban developments as done in the past many times, creating more opportunities for affordable housing. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you consider us helping with the affordable housing dilemma and creating a strong workforce within our community. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Does anyone else wish to speak at this time? Is there anyone else to address the board? Third and final time. Okay, I'll close public comment. Commissioners, any comments yeah, from well, anybody? Yeah, Commissioner well, Carnes? Yeah, I'll start first, though. That's fine. Um, for, first, I'm, I'm going to address Mr. Grant. Uh, what he got up here today and tried to show us has no business uh, in front of the county commissioners. Um, how they run their organizations, how they file their taxes uh, is no concern of mine, or I don't, I don't think anybody else up here. The gentleman that come up and spoke uh, about the contract, that's a concern uh, the county needs to look at. If the contract's not being followed uh, as we agree to, uh, then we need to have our staff look into whether that's being followed. So when this item does come up, I do agree with the gentleman, Ron, that this needs to be put off uh, and so we can look into these allegations. But again, uh, you know, Mr. Grant calling commissioners last night I think was inappropriate. I think what he got up here today to try to show us has no bearing on us. What's the bearing on this commission is the contract. And if they're not following the contract, then this commission needs to make sure they are following the contract. And I do think we need to give time uh, to look into that. So thank you. Okay. And, and, and also, uh, low, uh, real quick, uh, sure. I'm sorry. Take your time. Um, low income, uh, the Burr Harris Act. Uh, we cannot start changing land use maps to, from five acres into 10 one acre lots because uh, it puts the county in a bad position. Um, so so that uh, there is not. Uh, going to happen. Um, I would never try to force <laughs> landowners to rededicate their property and the government trying to tell them how, how to use it. Uh, unfortunately, the market right now is it's not very good when it comes to homes. Uh, material prices are outrageous and uh, I think you're going to see a very bad uh, downturn uh, here in the, in the near future. Sabrina, dead on with the comments. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that uh, you've gone through it like the rest of us and you know, I'll make my comments on that budget uh, that's in front of us uh, later. But uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, our, our salaries are also set by population as his. Um, we didn't get, we may have got a 2% increase, uh, not a 23 or 32% increase. So that's, <laughs> that jumped out at me also. Um, but, but anyway, um, I, I think that uh, we have to stay on track uh, as, a, as a county uh, to make sure our economic uh, good, economic good. We, we can't just start throwing millions of dollars because somebody wants it. Because the last thing we want is uh, to create an economic uh, turmoil. Then we're going to have crime rates going to go up. Right now it hasn't been going up. Uh, we're gonna, we want more deputies to arrest more. And then we're going to put them in a judicial system. So it's it's uh, it's it's a very um, fine line. And uh, you know, when I look at the reports, uh, you know, I looked at uh, the, the report that Emerson was gave on crime rate. It has gone down. So I want to thank the men and women that are on the front line that do their job every single day. But um, we have to be very touchy right now because, again, uh, if you looked at the stock market yesterday, you look at what's happening uh, every, every single day. Uh, instead of $60 to fill your car, and now it's $150. Uh, trying, you know, kids trying to get baby formula. Um, it's a tough time right now. And uh, as a conservative republic, Republican, I'm going to make sure that we uh, we toe the line and we uh, understand where we're at. So thank you, Mr. Slayball. Bud, congratulations! You didn't get vetoed. You're the <laughs> <laughs> one of the few. So. Uh, that's a good program, and, and I know we all were big supporters of it, so I'm anxious to see what happens with, with Too Far. Um, the soccer uh, problems, um, you know, I just feel like that's 
a contract issue that our attorney will make sure to take care of and uh, you know it happens um, parents get very um, invested in the programs and I just I just think that um, if there is an election in a certain amount of time then let that decide but to get rid of a, a league I don't feel comfortable with that because um, that one thing Mr. Grant did say is, you know, parents and children come and go, but leagues stay. And so um, I'm just, I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, affordable housing is, yes, definitely something on all of our minds. And workforce housing, attainable housing. So um, you made some good points on that. And we'll, we'll be touching on the sheriff's budget and along with all the other constitutional's budget. Thank you, sir. Okay. Commissioner Davis. Uh, yes, um, I agree with my colleagues um, in most, mostly, um, and most of this we will be addressing later today, but I have a couple of comments on things that aren't on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Osborne, I'm so excited that uh, I'm really devastated that Homosassa didn't uh, escape the veto pen. That was not good, but um, I'm really, really glad that the uh, Too Far and Chain of Lakes got the funding. I I had a couple of meetings on that up in Tallahassee, so I certainly was pushing for my district on that. Um, let's see, and then Mr. Lee, I would like um, a conversation with you at some point, no huge hurry on that, but just to uh, throw around some ideas. So if you can get in touch with Mr. Wright, he can give you my county cell number. And uh, the rest of it, I believe, is going to be on the agenda, so I'm good. Okay, Commissioner Kennard, any comments? Yeah, uh, Bud, congratulations to uh, to you and Too Far, and I'll see you next Thursday. <laughs> uh, let's see, and the use of the fields. I'm going to uh, also advocate that we um, hold off on approving those today once we get to that item. Uh, I don't know if there if there are issues there or not, but. I think a little bit of time is not going to hurt anything to take a look and see. And let's see the um, affordable or attainable housing. That's going to take some um, thinking outside the box uh, to solve the problem. I think all looks like not maybe not all communities, but many communities are struggling with it as well. And um, I don't know that anybody has found the solution, but. Um, I like when people come and share different ideas that maybe we need to be looking at uh, at some changes to try and um, try and get some some workforce housing in our community to help and let's see yes the sheriff needs to be transparent with his budget request and I think that's all I, oh Charles Lee again I, I appreciate that you come forward with not just a um, a no, don't do anything, but here's some other ideas, here's why. Uh, we don't particularly care for this route, and uh, bringing solutions is good, so thank you. Okay, great. Okay, again, most everything is on the agenda. I'll save my comments for them, uh, except to tell Mr. Osborne again, congratulations. Uh, good job sticking with that. The um, I just want to make an overall comment about the budgets. Um, and 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 for some reason it really affects the sheriff more uh, obviously for the size of it but you know we throw around these words like transparency and um, that, you know after a while words become used so much they have very little meaning or we all don't use them in the same way to mean the same thing and I'll give you an example what I found years ago matter of fact the county used to do this same thing and eight years ago we changed it I asked Mr. Oliver to change our budgeting policies and procedures and because of that I believe we are one of the most transparent organizations and I'll tell you what I mean just real quickly budgets mean nothing okay when somebody says I'm under budget what's that usually mean in government well I can spend up to that number right and I'm still under budget what I found is that you know and I saw this smoke and mirrors played years ago uh, the budgets presented and I'm just gonna pick very simple numbers and the budgets presented and it says 10 okay so last year's budget was 10 and this year they're presenting a budget and it says eight okay so everybody goes woohoo we cut the budget no they didn't because what you want to ask is what was last year's actual 
Okay, what'd you actually spend last year? So if they actually spent two last year and they're asking for eight, then they're telling you they want a whopping budget increase, don't they? So what we have to watch for is we want to have all agencies, every elected person, every branch of your government show you last year's actual, actual to date, and the recommended budget. Okay, so I'm saying that today before we ever get to any of this, and, and, the, and I'll just say this because we know it's true, the sheriff never talks to me unless he's up here, and when you ask the sheriff a question, he takes it as a personal insult. He takes it as, a, as an affront that, it, that we don't trust him, we're questioning his integrity, and I'm just saying at the beginning, uh, I have great integrity uh, and trust of the uh, clerk of the courts. I ask her questions. Uh, same thing with the supervisor of elections. Our job, somebody sent us a wonderful email that said, please, 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 you all are the last firewall between the taxpayers and excessive government spending. That's what we are, okay? So it's not about um, this and that and speeches and a lot of demagoguery about how if we don't do certain things we don't like certain groups or we don't support them what it comes down to is show us what you actually spent two years ago show us what you actually spent last year and what you actually spent year to date then show us your budget request okay because what happens is all kinds of promises are made but you can't go back and look and see that those promises were kept Okay, so I just want all the citizens to keep that in mind, and when you start talking to folks that are out there telling you, oh, that the county commission cut their budget and they didn't give them what they were asking for, ask those very simple questions and see what the answers are, okay? So I'm just saying that now because I'm going to apply that logic and that discussion throughout, all throughout the, uh, the budgeting process. But the rest of these items we will get to, uh, but first now we are going to move to item H1, which is a time certain. And that is our first public hearing um, that we're going to conduct on the county surplus property inventory list. Mr. Oliver. Yes, this is something hard to do every two years. Uh, and uh, we are asking that you adopt and authorize the chairman to execute a resolution with Citrus County, Florida, political subdivision, the state of Florida, declaring certain county owned property residential surplus property. Of uh, appropriate for affordable housing uh, or as affordable housing pursuant to Florida statute 125.379 and be approved and authorized the disposition of such property pursuant to Florida statute 125.379 and C authorize the clerk to uh, record the resolution in the public records of Citrus County Okay, so I believe we'll, uh, do we need to read this first, Madam Attorney, or do we just open the public hearing, or how do you want to do this? Uh, we don't read resolutions, so okay. just open the public hearing. Okay, so at this time we'll open the public uh, hearing for this resolution. Is there anyone here to speak in favor or opposed to this? Yes, sir. My name is Gaston Hall. I'm here representing the Citrus County Building Alliance. They have a letter on file. Uh, our request is simple. If it's residential properties in the inventory, use it for affordable housing. If it's commercial property, use it for the animal shelter. Very simple request. Any questions? Not at this time. We'll Thank let you. you. Is there anyone else that wishes to make public comment on the ordinance? Anyone in favor or opposed? Anyone else favor or opposed? Third and final time. Okay, we are going to close the public hearing. Commissioners, uh, thoughts? What would you like to do? I'm, on the face of it, it seems like Davis. a very. I'm sorry. On, on the face of it, it seems like a very good idea. Okay, well, we'd be looking for a motion to adopt and authorize the chairman to execute sure. the resolution, and then <laughs> we'll talk about any changes we want to make to it. Yes, Commissioner Kennard. I'd make a motion to approve item H1, A, B, and C with the, um, the proceeds from uh, residential properties uh, being um, allocated to affordable housing, any commercial um, uh, surplus properties, um, the uh, um, revenues from those uh, proceeds from those going towards the uh, animal shelter as this board has passed. 
previously. I'll second. second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Kennard and a second by Commissioner Slavok. We've had public comment. Commissioners, any other discussion? Yeah, any comments from staff? There are no commercial on this particular list, but that's fine. Okay. There's only, there's three residential lots. Right. I, I think perhaps, I'm just guessing what was probably being proposed is a policy going forward, not on this particular list. All you're asking for is this particular list at this time, correct? Yes, the list. The list is attached to the resolution. There's three lots, three residential lots. Right. Okay. Okay. So everybody clear of that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. I have 145, so we can move on to H2 145, which is the public hearing for the floodplain management ordinance. Yes, this is, uh, this is uh, required by FEMA to keep our floodplain management ordinance consistent and keep our rating uh, for, uh, with FEMA for uh, flood exposures and things like that and we would ask for approval of items A and B. And this being an ordinance, I assume we're going to read this, correct? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. At the conclusion of the public hearing, you're going to be asked to consider an ordinance of Citrus County, Florida, amending Chapter 18, Article 6, Section 18-196, entitled Applicability, amending Chapter 18, Article 6, Section 18-197, entitled Duties and Powers of the Floodplain Administrator, mm -hmm. Amending Chapter 18, Article 6, Section 18-21, entitled Variances and Appeals. Amending Chapter 18, Chapter 18, Article 6, Section 18-204, entitled Definitions. Amending Chapter 18, Article 6, Section 18-205, entitled Buildings and Structures. Amending Chapter 18, Article 6, Section 18-208, entitled Manufactured Homes, deleting Chapter 18, Article 6, Section 18-212, entitled Amendments to the Florida Building Code, providing for severability, providing for modification that may arise from consideration at public hearing, providing for scrivener's errors, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date. Thank you very much. This time we will open the public hearing on this ordinance. Is there anyone here to speak in favor or opposed to it? Yes, sir. Gaston Hall, representing the Citrus County Building Alliance. Uh, we are in favor of this ordinance. It needs to be done so we keep our rating. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there any other public comment, either in favor or opposed to this ordinance? Any other comments? Third and final time. Okay, we will close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners, what's your pleasure with this Mr. ordinance? Mr. Chairman, yes, I move to approve H2A and B. Second. Okay, so Commissioner Slayball makes a motion, second by Commissioner Kennard. Do we have any further commissioner discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Item H3 is listed as a time certain, but it's not a public hearing. Are we allowed to move on or we need to wait? We can move on. Okay, item H3, we will move forward with presentation of the Core Citrus One Stop Recovery an economic business center. Dawn Faraday, executive director of the core business center. Good afternoon, chairman and commissioners. Thank you for this opportunity to provide an update on the core business center, which was created to benefit small business in Citrus County. As we approach our one year anniversary, I am pleased to update you that there has been quite a bit of activity. That's one, yes, sir. This one, yes, sir. Among these have been mobile office hours by Senator Rubio's staff that was attended by a full schedule of constituents and will continue to be at the core every other month. Also, coffee with Commissioner Schlebaugh, which gave businesses the community business and the community the opportunity to meet with her. She's also expressed interest in additional <coughs> constituent meetings in the future. And this is something that's available to all of you. Also, there have been core committee meetings, score mentoring meetings, and of course, one-on-one -on -one sessions with small businesses. One of the businesses that I would like to highlight today is the Discovery Room. On August 12, 2021, Heather Kogar came in with her dream of having her own daycare center. 
With the assistance of CORE, SCORE, and her hard work and dedication, Heather is now in the process of hiring her employees and completing construction on her daycare center. Here are some additional quotes from business owners that came in to take advantages of the services that we offer. Chad Young of Manatee Snow Cones and Smoothies. I'm thankful to the CORE Center for the help and guidance. Starting a new venture in a new state is, very is a very challenging undertaking. Without the good people at CORE, it would, have been, it would have taken a bit longer to get through the process. Denise Potts, Prestige Court Reporting. I want to th say thank you to Dawn for reaching out to me to let me know about the CORE. I was in desperate need of office space. When Dawn told me about the CORE, I went to visit and saw it was perfect for what I needed. I just bought a court reporting business and I needed a place to do depositions. The price was way below what I had expected to pay. This was a win-win for me. Edward and Melinda May. CORE was extremely helpful and encouraging as we laid out our plans for our new business. They listened and then offered suggestions, ideas, and support for Canine Jubilee, our mobile dog and cat grooming, and dog training business. Our business success was partly due to meeting with CORE and then helping to set the course of our new business. We've built community relationships with some of our financial institutions, insurance companies, and real estate agents that are willing to speak with core clients to guide them or mentor them with any questions or assistance they may need. And that list is continually growing. CORE has also been a host to many different entities looking for small meeting space such as Citrus County Boys and Girls Club, Leadership Citrus, CARES Board, and the Inverness Area Council, just to name a few. At this time, we have two businesses that are currently occupying the incubator space and three businesses that use it for their mailing addresses. Dr. Geis with the Small Business Development has office hours the second Monday of every month. We have a CPA that has office hours the first Friday of every month from 9 a.m. to noon. We have begun the computer consulting program, and so far there have been eight sessions assisting new businesses with web design, social media, and, and we have more that are scheduled for their sessions. All that have been involved have reported back that they were very pleased with the results. The participation in this program has far exceeded our expectations. CORE has also added to their website a CORE job board that has free listings for all businesses in Citrus County that are hiring. At this time, I would like to request that the board consider moving forward with allocating funding in the amount of $91,751 for the CORE Business Center for the next 12 months. I think that you will agree that investing in CORE is a great investment for Citrus County. Now, I'd like to share a brief video that we just got hot off the presses. It's the first viewing. Business <clears throat> Center, also known as the Core Business Center. Core Business Center was designed to assist you the future business owner. We are a concierge service that assists you with the resources that you need. Resources such as guiding you to getting your business license, the proper place for your permitting, your SunBiz to get your state license, and all of these services are free to you. We also have available our small conference room for business meetings, whether they be one or two people, or a group of up to 10 to 15 people. When I was first starting my business, I ended up meeting clients in coffee shops. Um, I didn't have the ability to meet with them in a business environment. I used my home address. Uh, having CORE gives people the ability to use a business address and have a place in a public setting to meet with potential clients and set themselves up for their success. We have one-on-one -on -one business counseling with SCORE. We also have digital marketing consultations, social media marketing consultations, SEO, search engine optimization consultations, which is also at no cost to you. 
We have experts in each one of those fields that are ready to sit down with you and assist you along your journey. Yeah, the Core Business Hub Center approached us to offer consulting services uh, to new or struggling businesses to help their online presence. So what we do is we try to help businesses by uh, creating a positive and professional first impression online for them. So we, I talk with them and uh, listen and understand you know, what their needs are and give them advice on how to um, you know, create a website, uh, what's the best avenue to go down, um, and what the pitfalls are, and guide them you know, to get uh, an online presence for their website. And we have an incubator area for small businesses that may need a space to hold their meetings if they're working from home and prefer an office space, we have that available. I acquired my business at the beginning of the year, um, Prestige Court Reporting. We had a office, but we, since I bought it, I started working from home. But I needed an office to um, do my depositions in. I had looked around and it was really expensive and it was like difficult to get in. I put out on Facebook that I was looking for some office space that I, I don't use often but I use enough. So Dawn, Dawn reached out to me and told me about the core and I was interested, came up here. I spoke to Dawn, she showed me around and I just, it was perfect. I mean, the incubators are very nice. This area is enough room. It has privacy. They also have another room that we do depositions in. Um, it's completely private. So it's, it's perfect for depositions. And I really, really am happy that she reached out to me. CORE is a collaborative partnership with the City of Inverness, City of Crystal River, Board of County Commissioners, the Citrus County Chamber, SCORE, and the Economic Development Authority. You can contact us 352-419-4834 by email info at courtosuccess.com and our website www.courtosuccess.com. We look forward to meeting you and assisting you along your journey. Thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions, anyone? Good job, uh, Don. Uh, we appreciate uh, what you put into this. Um, unfortunately, we, we, I'm going to speak. We can't vote for it today. Uh, we'll have it on the agenda uh, next uh, meeting to to vote to extend this another year. I want to thank uh, the city of Crystal River and Emmerness for coming out today and supporting this. Uh, but I do believe it's been a success. And, and I want everybody also to remember this is CARES Act money. It's not money coming out of the general fund for the taxpayers of Citrus County. So if we do fund it another year, which I hope we do, uh, it's CARES Act money that uh, we received and we put in the economic development. So thank you. Who else? Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Don. Good job. Thank I've you. been there, um, and I I think this is exactly what Commissioner uh, Carnahan said that this is CARES Act money. This was put in place for economic development. Yes, it's new, but I think that you're at the um, the beginning stages of something that could be a leader in the state as far as helping businesses. I know that when we started, we we didn't we weren't able as a company to have a office space and. Uh, they didn't even have coffee shops back then 30 years ago so you know it, it was sometimes we had to go into people's homes and, and it was it was just a unsettling feeling um, especially as a woman and um, I, I really think that this could be something that's great and I appreciate all the volunteers that have helped out in the cities that are are supporting this so thank you for a good job thank you Mr. Davis um, great job, and um, I would certainly be in support of, of going another year, but I'm, of course, thinking beyond that. Um, and I, uh, I haven't looked into this, but my understanding is that incubator-type situations will charge something for various rooms and whatnot. Do you have a program whereby, for example, the prestige court reporting they get X, you know, whoever's using these spaces, do they get charged some sort of nominal yes, fee? Okay. Yes, ma'am. We All have right. a contract written up with them. Okay. And they get charged by the month. 
by the month? Yes, ma'am. And do they get a certain number of hours that they schedule? Because um, you can obviously make use of the space multiple by, by multiple clients, right? We have it right now as a maximum of 15 hours a month. Okay. If they don't use all those hours, of course, then that does roll over to their next month. But we have a, we have a max 15 hours a week. I'm sorry, I misspoke. 15 hours okay. a week that they can use it. So that will alleviate some of the funding needs, obviously, yes, going yeah. forward. So, yes, okay, yeah. awesome. Mr. Carr? Yeah, well done. Great collaborative effort, and uh, look forward to seeing it on the agenda next meeting. Mr. Chair. Just a second. Okay. Are you complete? Yep. Okay. Thank yes. you. Th thank you. Also, I want to thank Jim Green and Arth uh, for the hard work you guys put in. I'm sorry for forgetting you, uh, oh. but uh, you guys have really uh, stepped up and really put in the hard work. So, uh, again, thank you. Okay. And I, I just want to be out in the open and say I do not support it. I never have, and I won't in the future. And all you have to do is say it's necessary for the taxpayers to fund to meet with commissioners. Okay. Commissioners don't have offices where they can meet. Um, is it necessary to meet with Marco Rubio staff when he does it here and he does it other places? And to me, it's, it's subsidizing. You're competing or we're competing with tax dollars against realtors. We're sub, you know, if I have office space I'm trying to rent and people say, well, uh, I can't rent it because those folks are going to reduce rate or going to go use a government subsidized facility. So I guess I'm the only one that believes that businesses that need government's help to survive isn't really a business. Uh, and, and that's my position. And I know I'm always losing, but I want to stay consistent and just say I haven't supported it in the past and I won't in the future. So thank, thank you very much. Comments, thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have now completed um, the public hearing. So let's go back. I believe we are now at regular business. We will go back and pick up with item uh, E1 bids. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, move to approve E1 A through C. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Carnahan and a second by Commissioner Kennard. Is there any public comment on E1, A, B, or C? Any further comments from the board? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. Item E2, please. Yes, approved budget transfers for housing services, extension services, library services, engineering, Aviation Utilities and the Visitor Convention Bureau for 21-22. Motion to approve item E2. Second. second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Kennard, second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comment? Any further board discussion? Not that it's a major issue. I'm just curious, what uniforms are the Convention Bureau buying? These are the shirts that they wear at the trade shows and things like that that say okay, Jesse okay. Christopher. All right, very good. Okay. So, no further board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. E3, please. Adopt and authorize the chairman to execute a resolution amending adopting uh, the road maintenance budget, low income uh, home energy assistance program, state housing initiative partnership, and uh, have, have a grant election security grant budgets for fiscal year 21 22. Okay, commissioners? Move to approve E3. Okay, motion by Commissioner Slayton. Second. Second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comment? Any other board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That carries unanimously. Item E4. Yes, this is a uh, lease at the uh, Citrus County Resource Center at uh, 2804 West Markham Knight uh, Court in Lacanto. Uh, this has been a lease that's been ongoing with uh, Citrus County Harvest Incorporated, and uh, we're asking for you to renew the lease. The cost is $335.30 per month in revenue. Commissioners. Motion to approve item E4. A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Second. Okay, Commissioner Kennard makes a motion, second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comment? Any further board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. E5, please. Yes, approve a request from Janet A. Warren, Citrus County Tax Collector, to extend the tax roll pursuant to section one no 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 oh i'm sorry e5. you're right you're right mm -hmm. mark mm -hmm. uh e5 
is a resolution uh, to restore the lower Withlacoochee River, adopt and authorize the chairman to execute a resolution in support of establishing the need for uh, legislative action and direction to state regulatory agencies to restore the lower Withlacoochee uh, River. I would note that I did have a call with Mark Falkerson and uh, he wanted to make sure that the county uh, was cognizant of the fact that uh, intuitively if you uh, increase the flow in one area it may diminish the flows in another uh, it clearly says that in the resolution Dan Hilliard tells me that it's not their intent to diminish those flows or lower the lake level but somebody needs to be cognizant of that as this moves forward okay motion to approve E5 second okay Commissioner Davis makes motion second by Commissioner Carnahan is there any public comment is there any board discussion all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that's unanimous. E6, please. Yes, this is the extension of the tax roll uh, by the Citrus County Tax Collector to extend the roll pursuant to 197.323 of Florida statutes. Approval E6. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Carnahan and a second by Commissioner Slaybaugh. Is there any public comment? Any board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That's unanimous. E7, please. Yes, E7 is, a, is allows us to use fish and wildlife posts that are out there to put the signs on, but we still have not received the sign approval. We're hopeful as soon as they get this back, they will give us that sign approval, but there are no guarantees. So we would ask for approval for A and B. And B is the budget transfer to print the signs and install them. And... Uh, 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 Mark, Mark Edwards has somebody lined up that will be has indicated they can do that on an expedited basis. Okay. Motion to approve item E7 A and B. Second. Okay, Commissioner Kennard makes the motion. Second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comment? Board, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That is unanimous. E8, please. Approve and authorize chairman to sign the memorandum of agreement between the county are between the Commission for Transportation Disadvantaged in Citrus County, Florida for the designation of Citrus County Transit as the Community Transportation Coordinator to plan, coordinate, and implement the most cost-effective transportation disadvantaged transit system as possible with all resources available through the Commission for Transportation Disadvantaged beginning uh, July 1st of 2022 and ending June 30th, 2027. Motion to approve EA. Second. Okay, Commissioner Davis makes the motion, second by Commissioner Slaybaugh. Is there any public comment? Any other board discussion? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that's unanimous. E9, please. Approve and authorize the chairman to execute the transportation coordination contract between Citrus County, Florida, and the uh, Citrus County Association of Retarded Citizens doing business as key training center motion approved item e9 second okay commissioner Kennard makes the motion second by commissioner davis is there any public comment any board discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed say nay and that's unanimous e10 please i think this is the one that the board uh i kind of got the impression you want to postpone this two weeks but it's up to you commissioner Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, uh, first, yeah, first and foremost, um, um, you know, there has been some um, comments made about the contract. This is nothing but about the contract and whether they're following uh, the contract or not. Um, I've heard from multiple people that uh, the contract hasn't been followed. Uh, there's uh, uh, vendors out there that shouldn't be out there. If there is, they should be providing insurance and so on. I have spoken with the county attorney. Uh, so what I would like to do, and, and, and I want to have a discussion before I make the motion, is uh, do we want to pull it in entirety or do we want to go ahead and okay the other two uh, and hold off on this one? Um, it seems to me the other two leagues are doing a good job. We haven't heard any complaints. But uh, some of the complaints I heard with the contract uh, are quite disturbing to me, especially when we're bringing um, other counties in uh, and you're looking at tourism, okay? We, we've talked about sports tourism for a, a number of years. Uh, and, and when we bring um, 
other counties in uh, to, to play at our facility, the last thing that I want is complaints and, and emails sent to us. Um, with that, I do believe in the contract, it does state that they're responsible uh, for taking care of these facilities. We, we provide the, uh, the tissues and things of that nature, and they provide uh, the upkeep on these facilities, and it seems to me that hasn't been done. Uh, so with that, uh, board, I would like to have a discussion whether we pull them all or we just go ahead and uh, sign the two and, and hold off on this one until uh, we, we have time to look into it. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair? Yes, sir. Commissioner Kennard. <clears throat> um, two things I want to address. First of all, I would support um, uh, approving the other two uh, because there, there's not been any issues raised. but. To, to the point that Commissioner Carnahan raised about the facilities not being taken care of, and uh, one of the public speakers also raised that point as well during one of the uh, one of the tournaments. Now, uh, my understanding is not only uh, did they not uphold uh, that portion of the contract, but then went on uh, social media to blame the county for not maintaining it over the weekend when that wasn't the county's responsibility at all. Uh, that it was either their responsibility or they could pay the county to maintain it over the course of that tournament. They chose not to pay. They were going to do it themselves, didn't do it, and then proceeded to blame the county for not taking care of it. So um, there are some issues there. I think this, um, uh, this particular one needs to be pulled until uh, our next meeting when uh, giving us uh, some time to further address if they're uh, upholding their end of the contract. If they are, fine. Uh, if they're not, then we need to look at that and they need to um, they need to uphold their end of the contract with the county and then we can approve it at that time. Board, anybody else? Yes, Mr. Sleva. I haven't had any complaints uh, for this and I just feel like, you know, if, there, if there's going to be a new board and this is a league, and there's a problem with that board, then elect a new board. Why are we in the weeds with this? Other than we need to approve the contract, and I think the, our county attorney advises us of that. I've heard nothing about good or bad about any of these things, so um, I don't feel like I can oh, stop a contract when I haven't heard good or bad. And, um, and again, this is for a league. Um, people are messing it up, not the league messing it up. Correct? Mm -mm. Mr. Davis, any comments? I'll get Ms. Welcome over there. I, I think Commissioner Slabaugh's point about it, the, the people versus the league is well taken. I will say that I have received emails on the subject. Okay. Um, and that, uh, but we all know how passions can run quite high with parents and, um, and uh, youth programs in athletics and so forth. But to Commissioner uh, Carnahan's point, this, you know, he's, he's the big proponent of travel ball and, mm -hmm. and increasing sports uh, tourism basically in our county. And I completely concur that we need to be proud of our facilities and, and what we're offering. Mm -hmm. And there should be a continual increase in the, or improvement, not have incredibly embarrassing issues in the restroom facilities, which is what I understand. So I, it seems both reasonable to me, I think it's a, it's clear to go ahead and improve two of the contracts, but I could be swayed either way on the other one. It's really a matter of how do we get these questions answered and in what format, because it is a contract. Uh, Chair. Mr. I just say, uh, if you can't just say, Mr. Oliver had something you wanted to add. Yes. Okay. The only thing that the county's role in this is we make the fields available and they're given to these leagues and they're responsible for the programming, the operation. They do the lining of the fields and everything like that. Uh, there's a provision in the contract that provides that we'll provide services at the cost of $25 an hour. We do not send people over there. None of the leagues have elected to use our services to do that. We do provide the supplies for the restrooms and things like that, so it's up to them to maintain them. If the board wants, we can, you know, uh, you know, periodically go by there and check and see how they're doing, but that will be a cost to the league. I did hear, and I don't know whether it's true or not, because again, we don't have people out there, that there was an ice cream truck and that would require a, a license and approval by uh, Parks and Recreation. 
and a t-shirt vendor I've also heard and there was also a question as it relates to whether the concession funds are going back into the league and that's not a county issue uh, we don't have anything to do with the concessions they're supposed to operate the concessions and the any excess funds w beyond what it cost them would go back into you know decreasing the cost for the kids to operate that but uh, I don't think that the county wants to get involved in any way in the middle of that scenario because uh, you know auditing that and know what's spent and what's not spent would be uh, cost more, more far more than it's worth and uh, Madam Attorney did you have anything to add to the conversation I guess I'd be question I, I, I would be interested is there an, a legal issue if one of the suggestions I've heard is to approve two of them not the third until the next meeting is that an issue or not or what, what are you thinking on there's not a legal issue, just perhaps a timing issue, because my understanding is that the students uh, begin practicing when the school year starts, and the school year starts around the beginning of August. But as long as you have everything in place by then, it, it should be fine. So in terms of uh, approving two and holding off on the other one, it's not a legal concern. But your first question was if I had anything to add to the discussion. So That's would you true. like me to answer yes, that question? Yes, if you have something to add to the discussion, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we don't so pay you just to sit there and not let us know what you think. You uh, I know, but I <laughs> sometimes just wait till I'm... Okay. Well. Uh, anyway, the, the contract does require anyone using the uh, facilities to, if they are going to retain a vendor to operate the facilities, that they do need to notify the county of the vendor they need to provide copies of any applicable licenses or permits, and uh, they need to submit a breakdown of rev revenue distribution, which would get to the issue of what part of the revenue is going to the league versus what part of the revenue might be going to the vendor if there's some outside entity, and copies of insurance, which is of paramount in importance. So as far as the uh, one of the leases, uh, we have not been, the county has not been provided copies of A through D uh, or information as to A through D. So in terms of uh, strict compliance with the contract, those things should be done if someone other than the league is operating the concession. Okay. Or other things like ice cream trucks and T-shirt sales. Okay, and, and I'll just for just for the record to let you know that the, I, I also have been contacted by some folks in the community and some of them had rather lengthy lists of issues and, and I kind of said the same thing. That's, you know, the county doesn't get involved in that, but what did um, concern me was the issue about hygiene or lack of hygienic conditions in the restrooms. And when I heard visiting counties and visiting players were forced to go into the woods to use the restrooms because their parents wouldn't allow them to use the county's restrooms because they were so deplorable to me that rose to the level of we need to look into that and do something mm -hmm. about it so um, again I don't know that that's true I wasn't there I didn't see it I didn't talk to the parents but it seems to me if we can delay two weeks or until the next meeting and get answers to those questions without causing any delay to the season that would seem a prudent thing to do so yes sir yes. <laughs> if, if I might, yep. the only thing that I would say is that, as you all uh, often point out to me, is that when lawyers get involved in things, mm -hmm. things take a little longer and they get more convoluted sometimes than they need to. And more expensive. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that too. Uh, so uh, I wonder if two weeks is really going to, I, I mean, an investigation type thing of looking into whether or not revenue was here or there or where the revenue went to or talking to people who may or may not have been there to determine whether the bathrooms were clean or not. I don't know if two weeks is going to get you, uh, especially if there's lawyers involved, you might not even get a, a phone call back. Let, but let I'm just saying, so two weeks is short. Well, so let, me come back to the, let me come back to this. We don't want to be disruptive, but we want to fix the, if there is a problem, we want to fix it. So what I would think is if we delay it two weeks, like you wish to do, bring it back, but we put... If, if our concern at this point is with that one league and this one I issue that we do inspect, just send some county folks out. And uh, if there's an issue, it's documented, okay? And that we don't make a decision based on one time. We tell them you need to get, you need to get 
My understanding is the they don't pay the county because they expect their volunteers to do it and their volunteers don't do it. And that's what causes the issue. So I, I would expect that we'd say we expect this to be remedied. We're not, I don't think we need to be out there auditing them and looking into that. If, if each side has gotten lawyers involved, let them deal with that. But I sure don't want people saying we don't send our kids to Citrus County because their bathrooms are unsafe to go into. And I think that that was my primary concern. Yes, sir. Mr. May I suggest that in this new contract that you're going to bring, we're going to bring forward in two weeks, we go ahead and throw in there an inspection fee so we can have somebody from Parks and Recs go there once or twice a week, you know, during the weekend to inspect the facilities. I mean, it, there's going to be a cost to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, I, I no think problem. that will prove whether it's true or not. I can't answer. I, I mean, again, if, if we inspect once and it's fine, but I don't know if it needs to be once a week. I'm just saying if you tell everybody you're going to inspect on a Thursday, I expect they're going to be in excellent condition on Thursdays, you know. So I would think maybe a spot inspection from time to time. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, just if you're if you're going to do that on that league, then you would want to That's do right. it on yeah. all of the leagues, mm -hmm. and so you wouldn't want to do the lease now, on the other two. If that's the if we're going to add that provision, and the other thing I would say is nobody's using the properties right now because there is no league in session. So right. between now and the next two weeks, we're not going to have an opportunity to inspect or do anything because there's nothing out there. And from what I understand, the main concern. I just want y'all to know I have spent hours. <laughs> yeah hours on this so uh, it's just like let her, let her finish go ahead uh so uh, the main concern was during a tournament that happened in the past right mm -hmm. now we have no leases so it's hard to enforce a lease that's not in effect right now okay so before i go back to the commissioner's discussion just to answer this then if we delayed everything until the 27th we could redraft these contracts okay for all three of them and could we not put in there at the they agree at the county's discretion we'll send somebody out to inspect at any time that we think it's necessary at a cert fee. That way, if we don't get complaints, I can't see a reason why we'd send somebody out, but if sometime in the future, if we do get complaints, it's in the lease that we could do that. Would there be a problem with doing that? We could do that, and we would encourage anyone that has complaints to tell us at the time, okay. not after the league is over. Okay, good. I'm going to go to Commissioner uh, Carney and back to you. Yes, sir. Well, let, let's be, uh, <laughs> I don't have any, any issues with that, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and again, if these um, leagues are going to put events on, they need to be full responsible for these facilities. It's very simple. I've been in, wrapped up in youth leagues, so has Commissioner Kennard, uh, you know, and, and we were always cognizant of the conditions of, of the field, uh, the facilities at, at nine, at nine yards. So it did happen. I see people shaking their heads out there. It did happen because you guys got on Facebook and you aired your uh, business. Uh, that's, that's, very, that's very clear. So I don't like the head shaking of that out there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we pull these uh, until the next meeting and that we look into these uh, contractual issues. And if we do have contractual issues, um, I think this board needs to put their foot down to make sure Citrus County is, 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 is in a good spotlight when it comes to youth sports. Okay, again, we economic, I mean, Holly, y all, y all, you know, you're running it now. We continue to talk about tur economic tourism, sports tourism. Okay, and I, I promise you from what I've heard uh, that they don't even want to come back down here and that's very disappointing to somebody that's been involved in youth sports pretty much uh, a, lot, a lot of my life, okay? Uh, even when I was a child with my father, okay? Um, it, it's very sad to hear these allegations, especially in my district. And uh, so again, I, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion that we pull these until the next meeting and uh, we'll deal with it then. When they come, can I ask the clarification then? So and we change the contract. To apply okay, for an inspection. An, an inspection, because again, I, I feel that these leagues should fully be responsible for these facilities. Okay, and, and, and what I wanna look at too, are, are the fields lined? Okay, are the equipment, uh, is the equipment safe for the kids to be out there? You know, I hear, I hear things about the nets haven't been renewed, just different things. Okay, if we're going to talk about contracts and make sure they stay to contracts, then we need to make sure the safety of the children are also uh, into this. Okay, so, and, and okay, uh, so we have that motion. Is stat, uh, you guys clear of the language on that that we're talking about? Because it's basically what we said. We're gonna, we want to insert in the contract at the county's discretion, in the future, if we need to, we can send an inspector out and they'll pay for it, right? That's what we talked about. It, and you're okay with that? I'm okay with that, but I, I okay. also think when we send somebody of Parks and Recs out there, I know that we, 
okay, as a county, we have a, a standard that we maintain and we're going to continue to maintain. They should be held to those same standards when it comes to equipment and keeping up with equipment and keeping up with lining of the field and things like that. So, okay. yeah, I, I want okay. all that in there. Okay, Commissioner Kennard, you've been more than patient. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Ms. Lynn said, <clears throat> pardon me, Ms. Lynn said that if we do this with this one particular contract, that it has to be done with all of the con or suggested that we need to do this with all of them. I don't, I don't know, unless that's legally required, I don't know that it has to be everyone because we've not received, we've not received complaints about the other two leagues. We've not received complaints about the football league. We've not received complaints about baseball. We've received complaints about one particular soccer league. Um, and I don't know that it has to be an, an ongoing expense on a yearly basis. Maybe it goes into their contract for this year that, that the county's going to go out and inspect periodically. Um, next year, that fee doesn't necessarily have to be there. Uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's some encouragement for them to improve their communication with their coaches, their parents, and so forth that when somebody's got a complaint about issues, they need to take it seriously or there will be a fee in there for the county to come out and look over things again next year. Otherwise, what we're doing is, is you know, these, these youth athletic leagues, regardless of what particular sport it is, they're operating on a shoestring budget to start with. And because of one particular soccer league that possibly had some issues, we're driving up the cost on all of them to go out and inspect them unnecessarily. Uh, so my, my suggestion um, would be to approve the two contracts, pull the one until next week. Uh, we would add in that inspection fee for this year for that one particular contract uh, and then move forward with it at that point. Address the other issues in the contract as far as the insurance of vendors, letting us know that, that um, you know, these different vendors are out there and so forth, uh, holding their feet to the fire as far as the contract goes. Uh, but only that one contract gets the, gets the inspection fee for this year. So that, that would be my, my suggestion. Okay, so let's go back because we still haven't got a second, so I want to make sure that right. everybody's clear on the motion. I'm going to amend my motion okay. because I agree 100% with Commissioner Kennard. Okay. And here's the, here's the beauty of the other leagues, okay? We have crews at Bicentennial. We have crews out at Central Citrus. Uh, the youth football uh, operates at the high school. So, so they're being watched. This is a field that's kind of out of the way, you know, out of the way that's not being watched. So I'm going to agree with you 100% with that. And uh, so I'll amend my motion to, to that. Thank you. We all clear on I'll that. I'll second it. Now. I just want to there I might not have been as clear as I should have been uh, because I have had discussions with Commissioner Kennard about some other issues I wasn't referring to uh, all other sports having the same provisions I was only talking about the soccer leases and the conversation that I think that he was thinking about was when we were talking about um, competitively choosing who's going to use what field then I said it would have to be consistent throughout all property, not necessarily leagues. Um, so I just want to make sure we're, we're clear on that. That's not, I only meant the, these two leases. And I don't know if it's if you guys want to say, if you, what you're trying to say is this particular lease or this particular entity that's leasing, because there might be a different entity that comes he in does. to lease those particular properties uh, which might not have the same issue. So it, I think what you want to say is that that particular entity that's leasing has those additional provisions, not necessarily the fields. Are you good with that? I, I agree 100% with that. Okay. And, and I'm going to go ahead and make the comment also. Okay. Uh, this is in my district, and I was brought uh, aware of it after the fact. Uh, as a commissioner, this being in my district, uh, we, we, we don't need to send staff out there because I'll be out there looking uh, to make sure that uh, these facilities are kept up and things are running in the right direction. And vendors that uh, are out there better have their information, uh, and I'll, I'll report back to the board. Okay, so um, I'm still waiting for a second now that we're no, clarified. I'll second it. So you second that. So we had the motion and the second. You had something else, Commissioner Slaybaugh, to add? Yes. Um, 
I was a dance mom, and that's why I automatically <laughs> think it was personalities in play with the parents because it was vicious. And um, but and and probably most likely I didn't get emails because somebody put a K in the end of my name instead of an H. That <laughs> happens a lot. I don't correct it a lot because it weeds out the emails. But um, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna be paying attention because. This is something that wasn't on my radar as a dance mom, but this, it, you know, y'all, these leagues are representing our county, just like you said, Commissioner. And, you know, we don't need any more help to our reputation in a negative sense. And, and it is, if this was a tournament that came outside, I, I had no idea about the bathrooms. And if Commissioner Kitchen was told that, that is deplorable. And I too will be paying attention because economic development is important to us and we want to encourage other counties to come and participate in an in, in event. Right. So um, I, I, I'm not on board completely with the uh, deposits. I think if it's one, it's, it's, it's all, but. Um, it's not, as I understand now, it's not a deposit. We're going to change one contract that will say at the county's discretion, we can send somebody out to inspect um, if we feel the need to, and they will pay it. That's what my understanding is. We're not going to charge them any different unless oh, we okay. have to send somebody out to inspect. And what I'm understanding is that would only happen once the season starts and we get a complaint that says it, we need to inspect. Okay. Is that not what we're and, on and the and same Mr. Chair, page I, I think we need to go ahead and keep that in the contract. But right. again, as the commissioner in that district, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure other commissioners now have, have been, their awareness has risen. Um, I will be going by there and, and watching uh, what goes on and, and to see how these leagues are run. Um, because again, uh, we, we get enough black eyes and this mm -hmm. is the last thing that we need. Okay, and let's remember this. If they are not following the contract and we decide, hey, we're not doing this, there's other leagues to pick up these children okay and continue to move okay the athletes are still going to be there and there's other leagues that are still going to be there so let's don't be fooled by that either okay so i just want one second are you clear on what we're talking about are we I all am, talking about the same thing I, I am but we keep mixing things up okay so my understanding is it's only the lease if that particular entity mm -hmm. that the allegations have been raised about does the lease but if anybody else some new agency gets formed some new corporation anybody else gets formed to take on that lease those provisions would not be in there it would only be with the existing entity Correct. that's what I heard that's yes. that, that's your motion yes that's your second yes okay I just have one final question yes ma'am yes. okay that's why I said deposit because it was a little getting a little muddy but if it is um, in the lease and there aren't any complaints and they're not putting the money down, what is the problem with leaving that clause in there that if they get complaints from any leagues, there, w there could possibly be a fee? You're not asking them to put any more money down, but you're putting them on notice. Hey, if you don't keep things flying straight and clean and tidy, you could have this fee. Okay, so uh, are we... I, because, just let me address I, I, okay. I, I definitely understand your concern, okay. but again, let me go back to this. Whispering Pine runs the league. They have a crew out there, so they're, they're maintaining. Uh, Bicentennial has a crew. We're maintaining. Central Citrus has a crew. They're maintaining. And then also the school board works with us, uh, with the youth leagues, uh, lets them use their facility. And make no mistake about it, uh, Jeff, uh, you, you know when you run in the football league, when you use that facility, uh, it better be cleaner than you first come. Uh, if not, they would they would pull that from you. So yep. I think we have the other okay. uh, uh, other things in place to make you know and everything seems to be running. This is just the one field that we just don't have a buddy in place. And we you know so so with that again, I, I will guarantee this board that I will be looking uh, and, and and looking at what's going on out there and monitoring. And if uh, I will report back to this board, so I don't see them incurring any fee, but I do believe it needs to be in the contract. Okay, so if I understand now, we have an agreement between the motion maker and the second that proved the two today, the third one comes back the next time with the change in the language for that entity. Is that correct? We're all correct. And everybody's on the same page. Yes. We're going to go to public input and then we'll have more board discussion, uh, more discussion at this time, or do you want to go to public input? I just, I, yes. I have a, a Citrus County customer service suggestion, uh, probably for either. Um, Commissioner Carnahan or the chair, whatever is more appropriate to reach out to whoever the travel ball teams were and issue a personal invitation to please come back and that it's been taken care of. 
well, we'll, we'll do that. Hand, handwritten <laughs> note or a phone call or whatever. We'll definitely, Something. Yeah, we'll definitely get, get who that was. At this time, yeah. I didn't think the Board of County Commissioners got into running the soccer league in Citrus County, but I guess we have. So at this point in time, we are going to open this to public comment about um, this motion. Is there anyone who wish to address it? Yes. Yes. Being is your microphone on? Is it? It is. It is. Okay. I can hardly hear you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm talking as loud as <laughs> I can. Okay. Um, <laughs> the two that are being approved today are the for Nature Coast Soccer and um, West Citrus Soccer, and the one that's going to be coming back is for Citrus United Soccer? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Yes. Now we're open to public input. If you would come forward, please. Thank you. Hello. My name is Matthew Benora. I lived in Citrus County for 46 years. Currently, right now, I am the vice president of East Citrus, the soccer club that you're speaking of. What we've tried to do, this tournament was a huge tournament for us. And I'm assuming that the complaints that were made, I was just voted in March as vice president. Okay, what I'd like to address with you guys is that I've heard the concerns myself. And what I'd like to convey to y'all is if we could enter into a contract with the county to have representation out there as far as cleaning the fields we would be happy to pay out of the league's pocket ourselves to have that I reached out during that tournament um, to the county unfortunately it was the day of the county and we were unable to get a hold of anybody because what had happened was the trashes was overflowing the toilets were backing up me personally I'm not that skilled at fixing that kind of stuff I did go in there and pick up some of the trash that was on the floor the only th I didn't go into the female bathrooms. I did ask some of the parents to do that. But if we could convey into the contract that the league itself would pay county members um, in the janitorial services to come out to the park when we do have big tournaments or even on the weekends sometimes when we have big games, I, as vice president, would speak with the board and we'd be happy to enter into that contract with you guys because I was a little lost myself as when it came to the cleaning of the facilities. Um, I know we do I, have I, parents I, sign I up know. rosters to volunteer. Unfortunately, we don't get parents that sign up that want to clean the bathrooms or anything of that nature. But being newly elected as vice president, I would be happy to sign a contract to have the county janitorial services come out there and do that. I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, about the Facebook comments, I have not seen anything put out from the league that was negative towards the county. As far as I've experienced with the county, you all have been very helpful to us. So, but I'd be happy to enter into that contract with the county to pay somebody to come out there and clean those bathrooms because I know under a volunteer level, it's not going to happen. So that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. We'd encourage you to get with the folks that do the contracts and work all that out. Can we have the next speaker, please? <clears throat> My name is uh, Ron Kierskin. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I just want to uh, comment. Um, the board, uh, Vice President Bernard, he was not elected. He was appointed uh, to the board. Um, and I don't want to get into, like I said, you're not running a soccer league here. But there are a lot of questions um, that we've been asking about appointing officers, not following the bylaws. Um, limits on term offices of the soccer club and those not being followed in the bylaws officers serving for six years eight years without any open elections and being appointed to positions um, this year was a very tumultuous year at citrus united and um, the coaches that uh, have raised the voice to some of these uh, tr troubles uh, have been labeled opposition. So if Attorney Grant uh, follows through with the 45 day, I think that's a little long because we really need an emergency injunction. And what I'm, a, what I'm afraid of happening is, is that the coaches who are opposing the league, they will lose their affiliation with FYSA on the, 30, the 30th of this month. So they will no longer be able to vote and 45 days, they'll, they'll continue running things the way that they want it run. So I'm gonna ask that if, if Attorney Grant is gonna run this, we need to get these elections done now, get the results back to y'all so we can get these contracts rolling and keep the season on track. So 
that's my say on that. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else speak on this motion? Anyone else speak on the motion? Okay, I'm going to close public comment. And all I'm going to say to that is this, and that is we're talking about right now dealing with what we've heard that's happened in the past. Uh, going into next year, this would be nice if all the coaches, parents, and everybody could get together and work it out. Because I do not believe this should be up to the Board of County Commissioners to set up mm -hmm. here and decide uh, about this and that. And I also understand I've heard that both sides are represented by legal counsel now, so I don't know that we want to get in the middle of that either. You know, so yes, sir. No, I agree 100% with that. And again, uh, Mr. Oliver, um, this is my opinion. We, we should not be entering into a contract to take care of their janitorial needs and their trash needs. Okay, I, I was president or sat on the Chris River Little League Board, Dixie League Board, okay, for, for many years. Okay, and, and Little League, we, you, we, make the parents or the kids uh, volunteer uh, so many hours. And if they don't do that, uh, then they, they, they get in trouble uh, and, and possibly removal of the child, okay? So there are ways, and these other leagues run just fine with the volunteers, okay? So if I was the president or vice president, I would be putting things in place to make sure uh, that these facilities are taken care of and their responsibilities are taken care of. So I would suggest absolutely no way are we entering into a contract we're understaffed, we're, you know, we're, we're thin anyway when it comes to parks and recs. And um, then we're looking at overtime on the weekends and things of that nature, scheduling issues. So no, it's their, they're, they're going to enter into a lease. They need to take care of the facility uh, per our contract. Okay. Yes. What, what, pick one, whichever you want to go to first and then the other one. The goes. current contract provides for us to provide services at the cost of $25 an hour, but they've got to set that up a week in advance. I mean, obviously, they can't call us an hour before they want the service. That just doesn't work. But uh, the contract has some provisions for things that, you know, may be needed. But nobody called on us. Yeah, just a second. Uh, yes, ma'am. So it's, it's paragraph 1C. And it say, states that if maintenance is requested by the contractor, there will be a $25 per man per hour, probably per person. <laughs> Per man, per hour maintenance fee for any event requiring a park facility use application. So if they need us to come out there, they can do it in advance, pay the $25. And that is in all three proposed leases. So that is in the two leases that y'all are already uh, approving. And if the vice president needs a copy of that, um, we can give him a copy of the one that was in place during that tournament last year. Okay. Commissioner Carney, you have well, uh, $25 an hour. So we're going to send them out there with a vehicle. We're going to pay their wages. We're paying for insurance. Twenty-five dollars an hour. What I would suggest is take it out, and they can go down to the day laborers <laughs> and, and bring in day laborers and, and run their facility. Um, I, I, twenty-five dollars an hour. That's just losing money for the county and losing money for taxpayers. I think that's absurd. I think again. I thought the concept was the county was there was a backup in case something happened. Parents couldn't do it. They had a big event, whatever. I don't think it was ever intended that the, the county was going to enter in and to do that. Uh, Commissioner Slayball, you had a comment? Uh, no, I just a okay. agree that I, I, I'm sorry. Yes, I have a mm -hmm. comment. I agree that we, th we're just here about the contracts and we're mm -hmm. not in the business right. of getting right. into disputes. So right. I will defer to you. Okay. Your, your Any opinion. other board discussion yeah, on this motion? Anything else? Anything else from the attorney or Mr. Oliver? Everybody clear on where we're going? Okay. <laughs> Not saying anybody agrees with it, but everybody's clear with it. Okay. So with that said, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And hopefully this will all get worked out so we won't have to deal with this anymore in the future. <laughs> Item E11, please. Yes, yeah, approve annexation of a portion of Kings Bay by the City of Crystal River. City of Crystal River, as you're probably well aware, uh, wants to annex that portion of Kings Bay uh, and create uniform rules. I would note that uh, once uh, this is approved, it will be in their jurisdiction forever. Uh, and uh, as a result of that, whatever rules they impose, and I think, uh, I know Mr. Frank is here, the city manager, I think that they want to look at uh, prohibiting mooring in certain areas overnight Amen. and some things like that. Uh, but uh, you also need to understand, you know, what you're giving up. And then the question is going to be also potentially, you know, as it relates to the cost of maintaining that enforcement in the bay. 
Well, I assume that everybody got the same email I did from the mayor that says no increase in cost. Did everybody get that yep. same thing? So it should be in the record that the mayor says no additional cost if this happens. So that's what and Mr. What Chair. We yes. I'll make a motion we approve item E11. And Mr. Second. Chair. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Davis. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Commissioner Kennard made the motion, and that was a second by Commissioner Davis. Um, I'll have some questions, but I'll wait until after public input. Is there any uh, public input on item E11? Anybody wish to speak to this? Any public input? Okay, so we'll close the public comment on that and we'll go to commissioner discussion. I just have a couple of questions, just not that I'm one way or the other, but I just want to make sure my understanding, everything from the upland uh, stays with the county, like dock permitting and so on and so forth. How will marinas be affected? Uh, as an example, uh, if there's a marina that, as of right now, the water is the city, or not the city, is the county, will there any marinas be impacted by this that would then become in the city that is now in the, uh, in the county? Does that affect any of them at all? Do we know about I do not know. Okay. Any, anybody know about that? Well, the the annexation, the legal description for the annexation only goes to the to the land. So anything that would happen on the land would still be got. If if they're currently in the county, they would stay in the county. The mm -hmm. only thing that's transferring is jurisdiction over the water. Right. That would be my question. So if I'm in a boat in a marina, am I in the county or the city? I believe you'd be in the city. Exactly. So that's, those are my questions. Am I under the rules of the city or the rules of the county if I'm in a marina that... The city. In the city. Okay. All right. And um, do we know if there are any of those marinas impacted by this? Also, my understanding is not all of the bay and the river. It's just where the city's demarcation line is, whatever. That's, that's what's strong for me. Correct. Right? Okay. Just so we're clear on that. Okay, um, commissioners, any comments, questions, I'm, I'm thoughts, discussions? I have, I yes. Have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was looking for Mayor Meeks' email, but uh, I just want to make sure that um, you know this was discussed. That um, they're going to, they're not going to um, require any funding from us if we turn this over. Um, we're transferring over the responsibility of enforcement and the resp and funding of enforcement. Like, we're not going to be responsible for any kind of money that somebody comes and says a complaint like the soccer league or is that, is that in place if we let, if this gets annexed? Because there will be enforcement. Mr. Chair? Yes. Did yes. you want me to answer that? Please do. Uh, so as just the mere fact that they're doing the annexation no there's no additional funding requesting and i guess mayor meek's email says that i think the concern would come in in the future if any future city councils or future mayors uh or future boccs that's that's the the question okay not today so my concern would be that there will be some enforcement there and that the county if we if this gets annexed that the county is not responsible for the funding of any enforcement once this is annexed currently no although they technically yes <laughs> there's nothing that would preclude them from asking for it in the future and a future board could agree to it or they could not agree to it right and let's and let's also keep in mind that people in crystal river pay full county taxes so they're paying you know for enforcement in my mind and it, and again this goes back nothing new i said this before i've never understood why the cities continue to pay for separate law enforcement i mean uh, because the residents in the city are paying the same thing that the people in the county are paying and then they're paying more and so that's why i would say right now that if any time in the future they come back and say we need more money for enforcement I'm going to say the people there are already paying twice, you know, okay. so there should be some thought put to that. Even though I won't be here, I'm just saying those are the kind of things that come back in the future that, that we need to be reminded of. Yes, sir. And I want to thank Chris River for stepping up because yeah. uh, anybody that's been out there on the water here lately, uh, even for years, um, the, the morning's just out of control. Uh, you know, I was growing up on Chris River and, and uh, you know, spending time fishing uh, today, uh, it's just a disgrace to come into it. I, because of the moorings, it's just, it's just sad, very sad. Um, so I, I commend you all for stepping up and trying to take care of this problem. 
Anything else? Did you uh, you came all the way over here, sir? Would you have any comments to this? I mean, give you a chance to speak to it. Uh, Ken Frank, City Manager, Chris Trier, uh, Thank you. Hopefully, y'all support this. Uh, I will let you know we we already do have a deputy that we've assigned specifically to the water. We added that to our contract a couple years ago, and he is out on county waters enforcing state laws. He just can't enforce city rules because it's across the city county line. Uh, so with this, we we could also impose the, the city rules across that line. And my number one target is the morning out oh, there. That's just ridiculous. It's 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 getting worse. I was out there this weekend, and uh, it, it's getting yeah, downright dangerous. So. Mm. Yeah, well, people can't afford uh, a place to live, so they take an old <laughs> boat out in the river and throw out a car engine and tie it to a rope, and that's what <laughs> that's what their anchor is, and that's where they stay. That's exactly so, right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we have motion to second. Uh, we've listened to the public. Uh, commissioners, no other discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. And that passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Frank. Appreciate it. Item E12, please. Yes, uh, this is an agreement as it relates to the Suncoast Parkway. This is the last thing that they need to get in place to be able to continue the parkway to 486. Uh, my understanding is, is they plan to let this contract out to bid in July. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Move approval of E12, A, B, and C. Let's get it to 486. A, B, C, D, E. All the way to F. All the way out to F, yeah. right? <laughs> Let, let's, get it, let's get it to 486. <laughs> okay. Do we have a second on that? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Slaybaugh. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Carnahan. Second by Commissioner Slaybaugh. Is there any public comment? Any further board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. Uh, E13, please. Yes, E13 is to approve and authorize the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council to submit a grant to FDEP for resilient Florida grant through FDEP's grant portal in the amount of 400000 with no match from the county. Uh, B is authorize the chairman to sign the uh, grant award subject to approval of the county administrator, county attorney, and all related documents once received for 400000 with no match from the county. Authorize staff to execute the purchase order to TBRPC once the contract's been fully executed. I would note that they will be hiring a consultant for three fifty, and there's fifty thousand dollars of administrative fees and work that will be handled by the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. They are also going to do the uh, workshop at the next meeting uh, as it relates to uh, you know sea level rise and things like that. So with that, we would ask for approval. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. You want this done, and uh, we all <laughs> want it done, so we approve of E13A and B. Second. Okay, so Commissioner Curran makes a motion, second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comment? Any further board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. It passes 4-0 so far. We'll get Commissioner Schleybaugh, when she returns, item E14, please. Yes, this is to approve two development review permit specialists and a new inspector for the building uh, department and growth management and approve the related budget transfers. <coughs> Move okay. approval of E14 A and B. Second. second. Okay, so Commissioner Davis makes a motion, second by Commissioner Kennard. Just again, so the public is aware, this is an enterprise yeah. fund. Right. They, this additional staffing is being paid for by the fees that the building department charges and what we typically do is um, and correct me if I'm wrong in any of this but my understanding is that uh, we run a reserve and when we see that permit levels and activity yeah. become high we use that and hire people and if at any time in the future all of a sudden permits drop off and work drops off then we sometimes have had to lay people off in the past is that correct that's correct or you know depending on what we forecast the activity we may keep a certain number it, it to some extent this is overly simplistic <laughs> it's like with a grocery store you right. can't staff every line all the time <laughs> okay there will be ups peaks and valleys and uh, but that's building is a self enterprise fund and self-support okay so when people see we're adding new staff they should just be aware of that right this is not general fund staff that's my comment so yeah no, I just, okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is uh, let's see Commissioner uh, Davis made the motion. I guess that would be for uh, A, B, A and B, correct? Yes. Okay. So we have a motion. Is there any public comment on this? Yes, sir. <coughs> My name is Gaston Hall. I'm here representing the Citrus County Building Alliance. And yes, uh, 
We have over $5 million in reserve cash funds currently. These are critical positions that are needed now. The process is way behind. Uh, we, if you just take the number of transactions, whether it's phone, email, processing permits, talking to people that come up to the door, and divided by the number of personnel you have, we're way low. So this is critical that we get this now. Okay, great. Thank you. Is anyone else uh, from the public that would like to comment on this? Anyone else? Okay, so board, we have a motion on E14 by Commissioner Davis, second by Commissioner uh, Kennard. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed say nay. That passes 5-0 unanimous. Commissioner Slaybaugh, how do you vote on item E13? Aye. Aye, okay. So I believe that was the only one we missed, correct? Oh. Yep, okay. All right, item F. Okay, uh, item F, uh, we are asking that item number 7 be deleted, and I will be mm -hmm. adding one uh, to uh, add the core contract for 91000 for one year. Uh, because of the <coughs> deadlines, it'll come to you probably July the 12th. Okay, and I have a question um, perhaps for the attorney. Item 5, the update on the home assassin noise and safety issue. Uh, can you give me an idea how that's coming along? Madam Attorney. Sorry, uh, the, uh, I met with um, a commissioner and constituent uh, twice now, I think, and I drafted some updates to the ordinance and sent those out to them for their review. So is that ready to come before us, you think, for a vote or a public hearing or whatever the next step is? Yes, yes. Your, yeah. yes, I, okay. yes, I think so. Okay, well then let's do that because I know in the past there's been issues about enforcement or whatever, but uh, on several occasions the sheriff and his folks have stood up here and unequivocally said we can enforce it, so uh, let's go with it and let's worry about those kind of issues down the road. So I think we need to get it in front of us and if they say they can enforce it, let's get it in place, particularly as soon as we can with the summer season coming up and scalping it. So. I drafted it basically as a mirror of what Crystal River did. Okay, great. Well, that's one they're enforcing right now, right? And I would guess we will need to uh, advertise the hearing of the ordinance and then have that ordinance, correct? Yes. So if we've got it drafted, can we get that? I mean, if the legal we'll background the work is done, can we get it out there pretty quick? We can get the advertisement on your next agenda for a hearing at the following agenda. Okay, very good. Okay, so we have that. Well, item seven, you're wishing removed. You're gonna add a new one. And is there any other comments on item F? If not, we'll be looking for a motion to accept it with the removing number seven. So I'm moving, we're moving number seven. Okay. And adding core center, right? Well, he'll add that. Right, that'll come back, that'll be added, all right. Okay, so we have, uh, and let's see, I'm sorry. So let's see, uh, who made that motion? I did. Okay, and who made the second? I okay, so Carnahan makes the motion and Kennard seconds it. Is there any public comment? Any further board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. Item G, Mr. Oliver, you got G1. Yes, item G1 is, as you were, June 1st or June 2nd, we got in the uh, budgets for the constitutionals. We is your microphone on? Yeah. I'm having a hard time hearing. I guess we get a little bit further away from it. It's hard to hear. I've so. never been accused of not being able to hear. Maybe I'm just going deaf. That's <laughs> uh, we got those particular budgets in, and uh, with the property appraiser and the tax collector, those are set at the state level. They get a percentage of the, of the fees that they collect, and anything in excess of that, we get back in excess fees. So those are, are not an issue that the board pines to. Uh, the, uh, we do have a brief PowerPoint. If I can find my PowerPoint. Who, um, again, kudos to putting this together. This was an exceptional, exceptional piece of work. And if anybody in the public wants to understand the constitutional budget uh, officer budget proposals pick up this document because this is this is excellent breakdown of it so 
Okay, if we go, if we go to the third page of this presentation, uh, the preliminary taxable values is twelve million thirty thousand, uh, twelve billion thirty thousand, I should say. Uh, current general fund millage is six point one nine three seven, uh, and uh, then we go through the various estimates. Uh, in addition to the, uh, we have previously advised you that we needed to increase two tenths of a mil for EMS and a half a tenth of a mil for Lifestream and the board indicated that they wanted to increase the road resurfacing budget two tenths of a mil per year for five years so that we got to the level that we needed to roughly resurface roads, residential roads every uh, 20 to 25 years. So that is, is the county side. We are currently, we are within the parameters the board previously specified. Mr. Oliver, quickly too, just for the public's um, interest, we, we discussed this earlier. How close are we with the addition of new construction and new growth and so on to being where we were in the previous year's millage rates? Uh, that one I'll have to. No, I think we talked about it. We were very close. We're, we're close. Right. I mean, we lost the Duke reactor right. obviously and that was a, a big reduction uh, but uh, yeah we're, we're probably pretty close okay good question I mean we're I mean my understanding is we we're pretty close that if we took just the new construction and added that to our current budget and spent that new construction money as new spending the millage rate would pretty be very close to being exactly the same as what it is this year so that tells you when we talk about the arguments of new, cons new construction and new growth paying for itself, it's there, right? So that's just going to lead to the question that says, uh, if, you, if, you know, if you need an enormous amount of money this year, what happened to the previous years? Yeah. So. Okay, please continue. Okay, uh, the next one we outlined was the uh, clerk's budget. Uh, she submitted her budget. And uh, we've shown that on page five as it relates to what's been requested. Uh, it's slightly above the guideline in magnitude of dollars. It's not that great. Uh, calling for a new network equipment in the Coke building. Not sure that's going to be required in the current fiscal year, but it will be required with, as that goes forward. And uh, then also replacement of a server. Okay, next slide. Supervisor of election, uh, she's asked for an additional uh, staff member and uh, also 120000 for redistricting and one-time purchases. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, slightly in excess of the guidelines, about 56544 over the guideline. Uh, but again, magnitude of dollars is not that great. Uh, judicial kind of has their own fund and it's uh, not that great. They're $557 over the guideline. Uh, so uh, we've, we've got that. Uh, the property appraiser, we've given you just that information so you can have it. Uh, again, we don't get involved with their particular budget. Uh, sheriff's office is obviously the, the, the biggest one. We seek guidance as it relates to this. Uh, the sheriff has... Uh, proposed to increase his budget substantially uh, and his total budget request is 6.436 million over the guidelines that were required and this would require a millage increase of 0.5632 mills. Uh, the budget also uh, includes the addition of 32 positions. Uh, as well as uh, if you go to slide uh, 30, I'm, I'm, oh, you're right, 10. I'm sorry, <laughs> can't read. Uh, it breaks down how they are. Some of the questions that, that we have is, you know, what, you know, do they explore the potential for getting grants? Because there are some grants out there for body cams and some other things. And we don't know the answer to that. Uh, don't know that there's anybody here today from the sheriff's office, but what the board may want to consider is sending a letter to the sheriff and ask him to answer any questions in writing back to you all that you may have in the formulation of the budget. Uh, we would note that uh, House Bill 3 uh, will take the state troopers up to $50,000 uh, in their base salary. Uh, 
uh, most of the sheriff's departments we believe in the state and I've talked with my counterpart in Hernando are phasing that in they're not doing it all at one time uh, the way that I read the sheriff's uh, the Citrus County Sheriff's budget is he's proposing to do it uh, in the current the proposed current year uh, we've given you the staffing ratios these are reported by FDLA and uh, for all the counties in the state uh, these are reported by the sheriff's respective sheriff's office to the state FDLE department so they should be pretty credible numbers uh, I think averages are somewhat deceptive because obviously the 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 crime levels and the severity of the crime in a major metro area are not as great as they will be in a more remote area uh, just so you know the ratio per thousand LE is for the sheriff's office the ratio per, per thousand LE plus concurrent includes all of the city police departments just so you understand how that works but that gives you uh, that information for them in the next couple of pages uh, this also uh, on slide 15 it gives you the salaries as reported and I don't know what date in 2021 they did this but these were the 2021 salaries again as reported to FDLA it was pulled right off of their website for the various uh, uh, counties within the state and uh, I, I believe that many of them are, are going to be phasing this in and not doing it all at one time uh, but it gives you all that and it provides the explanations that uh, that were provided for on that website uh, potential revenue sources are obviously sales tax if it passes sales tax could only be used for capital but if you use it for capital uh, it would free up some additional operating dollars assuming it's passed by the citizens of the county impact fees uh, uh, if you expand law enforcement you had five deputies the capital cost related to that and the definition is it has to have a, a, a life of longer greater than five years and does not represent a new service so if if you added five officers and added five cruisers and the related equipment to that uh, that would be impact fee eligible um, service on the water would not because it, in my opinion because it would be a new service that was never offered before uh, so there are some uh, there are some idiosyncrasies to that if there are any questions we can get with the county's grant consultant and uh, get any clarifications you may want uh, the there's some grants out there there are cops grants safer grants uh, Florida State Homeland Security grants and some others and again we don't have a, a good uh, handle on what may or may not been researched on their behalf uh, so with that uh, uh, that is the sheriff's portion and if it's okay mr. chairman I'll go through the whole thing and then we'll come back and you can give us your oversight uh, in your direction uh, we have the Board of County Commissioners there's some items that you all indicated that you wanted included in the next budget there was additional assistant to the board position there was an art professional for 70,000 there was a communication firm for 150 travel for key staff 5,000 and an increased travel for commissioners for 9,000 total of that was 302873 uh, so uh, I would note that the county is funding uh, and a number of counties do not uh, the school resource officers which is obviously very important uh, we are providing a 4% increase uh, for that to 1 million five fifty one seven eighty six and then since I've been here uh, the county's been providing insurance benefit for court employees uh, and uh, these are all items that were not legally required to by law but it's been a convention that has occurred over time uh, minimum wage came up it's also unclear in the sheriff's presentation whether he's taking the minimum wage to $15 an hour for his non sworn people uh, I heard in one uh, speaking engagement that he had that he was but I can't answer that from this budget submittal this gives you on page uh, uh, 22 uh, what the schedule is for getting to those various minimum wages which we're on target with uh, to do that 
Uh, I would note that if if uh, you approve funding for the sheriff to go to $15 an hour, and that's yeah. what he's anticipating with his employees, that it should be done on a countywide basis. So you, uh, it would be unfair to our employees not to Absolutely. do the same thing. Uh, the state legislature this year has uh, uh, gotten into a lot of funding things that I don't know whether it's good or bad, but they have. One is they have moved all of their uh, state employee compensation to the new minimum of 15. They're doing that by giving a 5.38% raise uh, to uh, their employees. Then if they're uh, under $15 an hour, they bring them to 15, which is going to create some compression. And I know that there is, is some concern at the state level as it relates to that. Uh, so, uh, uh, I would note that uh, the, uh, the Teamsters Union has ratified the compromise uh, that language has been worked out, which was a 4% increase across the board and 50 cents an hour top and bottom, which will work for us to get us to the levels we need to be at to meet that implementation schedule. So uh, if, if you honor, and I gave you the, the House Bill 3, if you honor the request of the constitutional officers in totality and fund everything that's before you, it would require a millage increase of 1.0569 mills. It would increase the current millage from 7.7623 to 8.8192. So with that, uh, we're available to answer any questions you may have or formulate any questions you may have uh, for any of the constitutional officers or the sheriff. Well, I'd like to make a couple comments and then we'll hear what the board has to say and then we'll give you some direction, okay? Um, first of all, if you look at page 25, that led back to my very first question. Without all these increases, we could basically hold the millage rate <laughs> with, with uh, new growth, okay? So again, some of these things we've agreed to, but you know, it, it, generally speaking, we've sent out a request to the constitutionals and asked them if they could follow the guidelines that we have set. I would hope we would follow the same guidelines. Um, so uh, the first thing I'd say is I, I'm not going to support any of the Board of County Commissioner requests, the 302,873. Um, the other thing is that um, with the, other than the sheriff, the other constitutionals are, you know, very minimal in what they're looking for above the guidance. But here's, here's the big difference, and I said this at the beginning of the meeting in my mind, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, I know the other constitutionals, we can look at last year's actual, we can look at the year before actuals, can't see that with the sheriff. Um, so my concern, and I, I've said this before, you know, it, you know, everybody says, oh, going up this many million or whatever, uh, law enforcement's in, important, safety is important, but it's got to be using Ronald Reagan's uh, terminology, trust but verify. And, I, and I'm going to be very honest, and it's all in the record, okay? So I'm going to lay it out there. One year we had the sheriffs tell us, give me this money because I want to give all my employees a 5% raise. I didn't vote for it. Some of you did. We found out later was, it ended up being a 3.5% raise, not a 5% raise. So we have no way of going back once we approve a budget to see if what we approved actually happened. Okay, where the other constitutionals, we can do that. So my thought that the guidance that we could give to the other constitutionals is, is show us why you absolutely positively can't make that 6.5%. I mean, some are with very, very close. And if it is a one-time thing or, or whatever, then that's the argument to make, not defending the whole budget, but why it exceeds that, um, what, what we've asked for, especially if we're trying to hold that ourselves. Um, and the, the problem I see with the sheriff's budget there's multiple things. I've already talked about um, that, but I also remember when we did the discussion about the fire, okay, and we took fire back, and we had fire audited, and I asked the auditor, some of you were here, some of you may not have been, but I, but I asked the auditor, I said, did you, the question I always ask auditors, right, Madam Clerk, did you get all the information that you asked for? And the auditor said no. And I said, did you have information withheld from you that you asked for? And the answer was yes. And I said, in your entire experience, have you ever had an elected constitutional officer refuse to give you audit information? And he said, no, sir, I haven't. 
<laughs> okay, so what we're dealing with is give me this money and I'm not going to ever show you that I spent it the way I told you and you can't necessarily audit me to find out. Okay, uh, also now we're told under a new law that you know, we can approve a budget based on what we're, where we're told it's going to be spent, but sheriffs now can move that around and do not need our approval to do that. And I'm still in the dark about the recently passed law that says the sheriff's budget can't be cut. <laughs> so if, if I understood that there was a law passed once that, and it dealt with the defunding the police issue that says once a sheriff's budget is increased, you can't go back and decrease it again. And I find that problematic, especially if you're dealing with capital expenditures and, you know, one-time costs like that. So I think there's those kind of questions, and I would think that this would be when we come back and do the actual budget hearings, that this would be the opportunity for the sheriff to address those. Also, I saw a, a very excellent list of questions that were generated by the, um, by the uh, culmination of these issues, because you see, Citrus does not rank out really out of the extraordinary with other counties. Some counties have higher populations and less deputies per thousand. So, you know, we're being portrayed as some crime-ridden community, and, and I guess I'm, I'm a little taken back by the fact that I'm hearing all this information coming from editorial boards and groups being presented this information, particularly that the board has not given the sheriff what he's asked for in the past, and we know for the last two years, all of us sitting here, every nickel the sheriff asked for, he got, okay? So, um, and, and I guess my final thing is, yes, we want to pay our deputies. Sure, let's pay them as much or more than everybody else, but does that have to happen all at once? Does that have to happen um, in one year? And, and if the budget request is to add 32 people and he gets that, that amount on day one, what happens on day two if all 32 positions aren't fired, filled? So my question has always been, are you fully staffed? And if you aren't, what has happened to the money? Because we gave you funding to fully staff, okay? And my other question would be, because I know Mr. Oliver's putting together a list and so is budget, um, what's happened to the excess fees that we used to get each and every year that we haven't gotten for the last couple of years, you know? So I think there's some real questions out there about taxpayer dollars that, um, you know, and every time you ask this question, these kind of questions, they show us the budget and say, see, it's all right there. We're very transparent. And I already gave you my speech about budgets. <laughs> it's not what's in the budget. It's what's been in the actual spending and, and where it went. So again, if, if, and here's what I'm hearing from the public folks, and I'm, I'm sure you're hearing some of it too. Um, there's 9,000 people that live in Sugar Mill Woods. That's more, I think, or pretty close to the same population as Crystal River and Inverness combined, okay? Sugar Mill doesn't have its own police force at an extra expense. And if Sugar Mill wants speeders ticketed, they have to pay an off-duty deputy to go down and write speeding tickets in Sugar Mill Woods. And they have a population greater than or, or close to the other two cities. So my question is, why does 9,000 people in Citrus County have to pay addition for law enforcement. And if we have 9,000 people in, Christ, in, in, in Sugar Mill, and let's say 1,000 people move there, what does that do to the crime rate? Is all the 1,000 people moving to Sugar Mill criminals? Or are we gonna see the crime rate spike? Uh, is it a new division or do we already have enforcement? And that leads back to the question, what enforcement do we have if we have to pay? <laughs> You know, so uh, again, uh, I'm, I, I, I've always supported law enforcement, and every time that these questions have been answered and come before us, especially I think we've gone down the line and always supported pay of our deputies uh, and those kind of things. But there, there's just many, many questions out there. And I would say this isn't being critical. This is an opportunity for the sheriff's uh, office to step forward and say, hey, thank you for the opportunity to give those answers to these questions, and, and here's what I have to say. So. Um, for what I'm saying, I don't think all the other constitutionals that's going to be that big of a lift. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, I am not supporting a 1.0569 millage increase. No way, no how, you know. So, and, and I guess the rest of you all can fight all that out after that. So that's my comments. Who wants to go next? I'll jump in. Um, okay. I mean, you, 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 so many great points and so many answers to be, uh, uh, to, to, to be tr try, to, try to come up with. But... Um, you know, when you look at crime, one, one thing I'm going to say is, um, you know, when I read the budget, I, I, you know, putting all this law enforcement on the water. 
That's not our responsibility, okay? And once you take that over responsibility over, FWC is going to say, then you have it, okay? You're doing it, you have it. <laughs> Guys, uh, um, you know, I, I understand salaries and that, but I, I, there's no way I'm putting another six or eight deputies in. you got to buy all the equipment. Uh, you know, the, you know the, let, let the Coast Guard, let FWC uh, deal with those. And, and FWC does a wonderful job. Uh, when scallop season starts, uh, they bring in manpower, okay, and, and, and they do a good job. Um, so I, I don't believe that we should be uh, out there uh, in force on the water. Um, I do believe there's a lot of questions to be asked. Uh, there is a good list of questions. You know, again, you know, I'm going to bring up uh, as, as an elected official, um, we are paid by the population of the county, and uh, our pay has not gone up, but maybe 2%, but yet, uh, when you look at his administrative cost uh, here um, in, in this budget, uh, I see a number of 184,000. So I, I, I don't understand that, uh, you know, when you take these positions and you're elected to these positions, you know what the, what you're going to get paid. And if your population goes up or down, it, it's a slide scale. So um, it, it should stay that way. Um, I agree with phasing in, uh, you know, the the uh, the pay scale for law enforcement, just like I do for the county. Um, and let's and let, let's remind everybody: if we jump out there and do this, then we need to be prepared to pay uh, our staff. The city of Crystal River and Emerus are going to have to pay their staff. Okay, so this is going to be a um, quite a hit. And and again, I, I'm just going to go back to this. Uh, I don't know how many of you pay attention, which I'm sure you all do, pay attention to uh, our economy. It's not good, okay? Watch the stock market. Look at the inflation, okay? You go to the grocery store, you put a few things in, the, in, in your car, it's $100, okay? And you have these young families and you have fixed incomes. You have a big fixed income here in the county. And um, uh, I, I, I haven't heard anybody saying that they're scared for their life, uh, that they're, you know, or, or anything like that. Um, I support the men and women. I think that we have given them, uh, you know, I would have liked to see a phase in uh, starting three or four years ago where we add three here or two here, and that hasn't happened, but we have given. Um, but again, I, I'm with you. I, there's no way in hell I'm supporting that big of an increase when we have fought up here for eight years to help uh, keep this county, uh, to, to bring it down and to make it affordable living. And again, this economy is headed in a bad direction, uh, in my opinion. And uh, you have families out here struggling to make insurance payments, to make house payments, to make car payments. And then we're going to throw another uh, uh, pretty much a fee on them. Um, you know, the sheriff, he's more than welcome to stand at that podium and look at us and point at us saying, yes, I want you to raise our millage rate eight tenths of a percent for me. Uh, so, I, I, you know, so anyway. I agree with you, Commissioner Kitchen. I think with growth and, 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 and that things that have come and property values have risen, um, I, I just can't do that at this point. Um, I, I'm, I stand right along with the city of Inverness, uh, with them, you know, with them holding where they where they should be. Because again, I think that uh, the last thing we want to do is turn have an economic disaster here in our county, and then that's really going to put a uh, bad situation to worse. Okay. You know, we'd like to yeah, yes, Commissioner Slaybuck. I'm going to test the chair's memory because I cannot remember. Uh, last year at this stage of the budget, were the constitutional officers here? Because I had a lot of questions for several of them. I don't think at this stage, this is, if, if, if I may, w what we did is we sent out a request to say, kind of give us an idea of what you're looking based on our guidelines. We've got that. Uh, July, when in July will be the actual here? Point? 26 that's when they'll actually be here and we'll go through so this is more of a back and forth okay. they told us we're asking questions kind of thank you okay. thank you we've never had this magnitude of increase before either to be fair this, this so I think you need it so. oh, okay okay mm -hmm. um, because I could not remember and this seemed very new so. mm -hmm. it is. It <laughs> okay <is. laughs> um, that makes me feel better but um, well since the clerk is here I do have a <laughs> <laughs> um, I just am curious, uh, wondering, do you, do you, does a clerk have a lot of grants that they apply for? Or are you, what, what do you do with grants? Is grants involved in your office? There are a couple of grants that are involved. Uh, the main grant that we get is from, as actually a federal grant commissioner. Okay. It's for um, 4D reimbursement for child support, totally separate from this budget. 
Um, there's another grant that we have received funding for from um, FDLE for MECOM, input of MECOM data. But other than that, we don't really have the opportunity for grant funding. We explore that. That is definitely something okay. we would like to be able to participate in, but there are very few opportunities for grant funding from for the clerk. Thank you. I, I was curious about that. And um, I, I know that obviously you're the clerk, you're very, you know, to the penny, but um, was there ever a point where you did return over the um, your reserves that are money back to the county? The excess fees? Yes, the excess, um, excess up fees. Up until 2000, um, I think the last time we returned excess fees was in 2008. Um, historic to that, the clerk returned uh, 100,000, 200,000. I think one year we returned, I specifically remember, remember us returning $700,000. But the excess fees that are returned to the board, um, and we can get into a deeper conversation with this later, mm -hmm. um, the excess fees are primarily generated from recording fees. Um, recording fees are uh, the, the payments that are you know, paid for recording of documents mm -hmm. in the official records. Typically, that's where the excess fees would be um, realized. When the market uh, crashed in 2009, um, the, uh, and as you're all aware, the housing market, you know, took a nosedive, and the, the uh, revenue related to those recording fees is directly associated with that. So we went from, the clerk went, and I wasn't the clerk then, but very intimate with those numbers, went from a $1.4 million revenue stream to about 400000 uh, in, in a year's span. So that was the last year that the clerk um, returned uh, any revenue to the county. Um, based on the rate of inflation, uh, the economic environment where we're in cur currently, I don't anticipate that the clerk is going to return excess fees anytime in the near future. Um, all of those uh, fees are utilized for um, technology and for funding staffing and those resources. And, and these are the three questions I have. I hope to meet with you and we could go over them a little bit more and you can explain to me some of the... Great. Uh, I just want to give you a heads up of what I'm kind of trying to figure out. Awesome. And then the final one was um, the, the insurance benefit court employee and, and how, and you don't have to do that now, but that is one of my questions. How did that... How did that come into effect, and was it at the, the, the downfall of the economy in 2008, 2009? Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, you know, just so I just need a little more in depth on that because it, it doesn't seem that we're legally required. Are we doing that because you're just so nice and pretty? I don't know. Like, it, so that's what those are the three questions I have. Okay. But I do appreciate your budget, and thank you for, for doing what you do, because I, you're one of the best clerks in probably the state of Florida. She is. The best. Can, I, can I insert something about that? Yes. Just, just a point, um, like with the school board, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not legally uh, required to give that money to the school board for school resource right. officers, but they're constrained by the state as to what they can charge. So if we don't give it to them, they're going to be short it, and that's one of those questions we have to ask about what is our funding priorities. And when we agreed to fund school resource officers, correct me, Mr. Oliver, we knew then we weren't required to do it. But we knew they needed our help and they wouldn't be able to do it without us. So we, cho we thought that was the right thing to do, and I think the citizens agreed with it. So, yeah, we might not be required, and some counties don't do it, but in Citrus, we thought that was the right thing to do. So I'm sure the clerk's going to give you the same kind of story about... <laughs> Yeah, that's because I don't <laughs> well, get to ask. There, I don't get to ask until I'm up here. Mm -hmm. So Same. these are some of that. So I appreciate that okay. information. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have um, I have quite a few questions with the sheriff's budget. I um, was hoping I thought maybe this was the stage <coughs> where I could ask the questions, but um, I, you know. There, it's been said that it, it'll only be $252 a person for our personal safety, but if you have a, you know, a family of four, you know, that's $1,000, you know, for, for public safety, and, and, and things are tight, and I, I, 
have so many questions, and I don't know if you want me to ask them well, now I, or. What I would recommend, and Mr. Oliver brought this up at the beginning, is it would be very helpful if we all, if you submitted that to Mr. Oliver along with all of our other okay. questions to whoever you have questions of, uh, and give the constitutionals plenty of time to get them and answer them. And that way you'll have the questions in writing yes. and the answers in writing. Um, but here, let, let me, can I comment one thing too? This $200 a person, we're going to talk about affordable housing. We just, we just heard people talk about uh, it costs too much to rent and whatever. Keep in mind, everything you <laughs> add to the millage rate, people who rent apartments do not get any kind of exemption on property tax. So if you raise the millage rate, you're raising the rent of every person in Citrus County that pays rent. Okay, every gas station, every business is non-exempt. They're going to have to raise their prices if you raise taxes, which is going to go right back to the homeowners. So the question at the end of this discussion, and the reason I bring that up is I'm hearing all this rhetoric too. Oh, it's only 50. Only it's 200. Oh, whatever. It's not mm -hmm. because we're looking at a recession. You're looking at on, you know, we haven't seen this kind of economy since the 1970s, and now we might potentially be talking about raising people's taxes, and I think that's just going to be, um, uh, I, I just can't even imagine doing that in this, at this day and age. So just keep that in mind when somebody comes up and you say, oh, yeah, I'm all for helping you pay your rent, but we're going to raise your rent because we're raising your landlord's property tax. So those are the things when you hear that, you know, you got, you got to realize and I'm sure you do, there's another side to, mm -hmm. to those numbers. So. No, it, it's a very big concern for me, and as it is, I'm sure, with all of us up here. Um, and, and there's some confusion because there's, you, you know, um, there's what is the vacancy rate, what is being given now to um, for payroll, and then adding more. Um, actually, one of the citizens brought it up. Um, I think you said ghost, ghost, and um, our, our hypothetical future employees. And if we just release that money, uh, are we obligated next year to give the exact same money? And I, and my know the answer is yes. And but so I think the taxpayers need to think about that because I'm really thinking about it and sweating it and. Yeah, it's just such a small amount for your public safety, but you know there's a, an amount for the clerk, there's an amount for the supervisor of election, there's an amount for the BOC, C, BOCC, and and every you know the constitutionals, and those little amounts add up, and we're you know people are barely hanging on right now, so um, I will give my list of questions. I am very concerned. I couldn't get the numbers to work at all for the payroll. Um, I, I will ask that to the sheriff um, himself rather than he's not here to answer me, so I'm not going to get into it. But um, I, I have some concerns, and I want to make sure that people can pay their rent and still be safe. So thank you. Anything else at this no, point? Sir, no. No. Anyone down here want to go next? Yes. Yes, Commissioner Davis. Um, I had plenty of time with this. I have plenty of markups, at least a dozen, if not two dozen questions on the sheriff's budget. Um, I will hold my fire and take the advice to um, speak with the sheriff's department. However, I will say that workload analysis versus per capita workload analysis is the only um, really fiscally prudent way to go forward on deciding how many staff to need. The per capita to me is what I call a sanity check. I have built a lot of very large budgets for various clients and sometimes you want a different way to look at things just to make sure that you're at least in the ballpark. So to me, per capita, there's going to be healthy communities that, um, and I don't mean health as in medical health, but healthy communities are going to need less per capita and unhealthy communities that have higher crime, crime rates are going to need more per capita. To, so to me, it's just sort of a, a spot check on that. Um, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Chair, that this is a fantastic presentation. It's great that I was handed it halfway through the presentation. I'd like to know when everybody else got it, because when I this morning, I grew yeah. up, I grew up going prepared for, to, for class. I'm prepared for client meetings, and I do not like being blindsided here. 
why was this released this they morning? were put in the boxes i told i asked doug to put them in this you're morning. asking me to absorb that this well, morning no. he didn't ask really it. it was additional information the the thing about it is remember we did not get these budgets till june the second so we had a lot of analysis to do on this and it's and, great i just really wish i'd had time to absorb it and that's fine this is just a kick off for you know getting the process started and getting it worked out but by Ju July the 27th, we have to present to you all a tentative budget. And so this the purpose of this is to get the discussion started. Again, it would be nice to be able to absorb it for at least 24 hours. I didn't get a lot of sleep the last few days, making sure I was very well prepared for this meeting and then I'm blindsided. Well, you have it. Uh, Commissioner, you weren't blindsided. You got it the same time we all did, and we all are not up here jumping all over them about when we got it. So I'm going to continue. No, I'm done. Okay. Commissioner Kennard. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb here and say, um, while I do have some questions, in large part, I'm going to support the sheriff's budget. Um, I would like to. Uh, I do have some questions, like I said, that I, that I would like to discuss with the sheriff. I've got some questions about um, expansion of the Marine Patrol, uh, which I do believe is necessary. And um, I, I think if, if memory serves me correctly, that last year um, we told the sheriff, uh, well, initially we asked him to submit an addendum. He did, and then, you know, for different reasons, we didn't support that. And we told him at that time, put it in your budget for next year, and we will support it. Um, so uh, I, wanna, I wanna talk primarily uh, with him about <coughs> Um, the equipment that's necessary. I don't. Um, uh, I don't think that uh, that we need equipment that is running 40, 50 miles offshore. We've got we've got Coast Guard. We've got FWC uh, that handles that. We've got FWC inshore, just not nearly enough of them to support the number of boaters that we have out there. Um, or patrol the waters that, that we've got out here and the number of people enjoying our waterways. Uh, another part of this budget that I would like to see happen, as well as all of the, the budgets, <clears throat> where we can, is to pull out every bit of capital cost and pay those separately. So that next year, when we're looking at uh, asking, uh, asking everyone to, um, you know, to hold their, their budget increase request to 3% or 5% or whatever it might be, you're not building that 3 or 5% on top of all of these one-time capital costs. Uh, so the, um, the millage rate required uh, to, um, uh, to fund their budget uh, doesn't have to go up as much. You're still going to end up paying out an equal amount of money, but you're not building on those one-time capital costs each and every year in the future. Uh, and the, the sheriff's, sheriff's office budget or the sheriff's budget, um, you know, has a significant amount of capital costs. I'm not saying they're not necessary, but I just don't want them included in the overall budget so that we're building right on top of that again in future years. Um, what else did I have here? Uh, impact fees. We, you know, we're, we're, we're just accepting that, uh, that we're doing two tenths of a mil for EMS. Uh, during the EMS discussion, I believe that, that we were told um, that it would cost the county somewhere between, I thought it was between a million and two million dollars. Um, I don't know if that was if that was an accurate number, and I'm not going to ask that question just off the, uh, out of mem to pull it out of memory, uh, but it seems like we're just accepting of that number of two-tenths of a mil. Um, is there is that absolutely necessary? Is that the minimum that we can uh, um, that we can increase to support uh, EMS? And um, uh, are any of these expenses that that are required for EMS and the sheriff can those be paid with impact fees? How much money do we have in impact fees uh, for EMS and for the sheriff's office? Can we reduce the amount of millage rate increase that's that's uh, that's coming by paying some of these things out of the impact piece? So I've got some questions about it, um, but like I said, in in 
general and large part that I'm I'm going to support it. Okay, thanks. Just and again, clarification for the public. Um, I believe we got all the constitutional's budgets June's first, second. Okay, on June second, we had all the constitutional budgets. So the commissioners have had since June second to go through all the commissioners or all the constitutional's budgets. What this document we were given today was an excellent piece of staff analysis that we didn't even ask for. Okay, so to say that if we didn't have this, we wouldn't be able to make decisions, I don't think is, uh, is uh, very correct. And the fact that it helps us by having this analysis, but the fact that staff took it on their own to go out and gather this data for us, they didn't have to do that, and we didn't instruct them to do it. So the budgets themselves from the constitutionals we've had since ju uh, June 2nd. Yes. Um, the question I got is, um, Randy, the number you read out that we would have to go up on millage was what? What again? If, if we let's just say we, and again, I'm with you also. One thing I didn't come in, uh, our needs is I'm agree that 300 something thousand, no, no way, no how. Um, I, I do, uh, yeah, so I couldn't support that. But what was that? Uh, and, and, and that millage doesn't it take a super majority? 1.056. I've got to, I've got to break that back down into categories because we did clear this with the Department of Revenue. Uh, and but again, I, I've got the numbers, but I can't answer that right now. Well, and then when we start talking about categories, okay, we've always done uh, voted on the millage by, by general fund. So I don't want to start breaking things out and doing it differently than we've done for so many years. Okay. And, if, and uh, so, so that's so just because we can get around maybe not having a supermajority. I think that's very uh, disturbing to the uh, public if we do something Well, like that. that's the way that the Department of Revenue calculates it uh, because, for example, during the time that there was an economic downturn, the administration at the time decreased the uh, millage for roads uh, to be able to move that into the general fund without increasing the millage. And uh, so there's more, the, the most space, if you will, is in that. I would note I got all of the budgets on June 1st, with the exception of the sheriff. They said it was dug down here, and it was in our office to me on the 2nd. So I didn't get it till the afternoon of the 2nd. Okay. Any other? Um, so did you get what you needed from us for today? Um, we're going to give I you I think a list so. If you want me to, you know, uh, either work with the chairman or can go under my signature, whichever you prefer, to take the questions that you may have, for any of the constitutional budgets, I'll be glad to do that. If you want to meet with them one-on-one -on -one to answer questions, that's fine. It's up to you. It's your prerogative. I think it would be helpful. Again, the commissioners can do what they want, but I would be, well, obviously, Commissioner Slayball went through a lot of time and trouble for these questions. I'd like to see what the answers are so that he doesn't have to tell you and then get up and tell us again, you know. So um, uh, on top of whatever any individual commissioner does, I would like to see us submit questions. I know um, staff has been working on some based on feedback from some of the commissioners, and I'd like to see those submitted in writing and get a response to them. And the sooner the better, because the more chance we have to analyze them prior to the 27th, is that what it was? 26th, uh, the better, so. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Would you, would, would it be um, helpful, I mean, I don't have that many questions to, to tell you my questions, and then that way if you have the same questions, they don't have to be repeated or let the staff just pick through it? Mm -hmm. Well, only thing I'm thinking is if we do this, some of us may have the same questions. Oh, so yeah. instead of getting them submitted three, three times okay. or whatever, it might just they would be able to look and say, here's say, oh, the questions okay. from. Very good. You know, that's, that, I mean, it's totally up to you however you want to do it. So. And, and I just, I do want to say one thing that is a very, that is a concern for me is, um, you know, obviously I've been, you know, business administration major and, I'm in business for 30 years, and I've been, we were given numbers in this report, this budget, and when I would try to run the numbers from the data that was given to me, I came up that with this ask of $6,893,201, um, for the patrol unit, and, and it comes to taking out the supervisors, the sergeants and lieutenants, and the, and the base pay. I come up that this this money right here will pay each 
patrol deputy, 84 of them, because it was given to us, $68,000. That, that's, that does, I can't get the numbers to work. So I can't, these are questions I have, they could be explained, but the data I'm giving, I can't, and I cannot just go and approve something when I can't get the numbers to work. And then add in another four million for the additional 21 people that aren't even hired. And, and, um, and, and, and maybe I'm taking umbrage because I spent probably 20 hours going through the constitutional's budgets and the sheriff's budget, and then to be told, oh, the commissioners don't even look at them. So, you know, oh, just yeah. to blatantly oh, yeah. say, you know, I'm going to approve this. There are some, there's some real questions here that, and, and maybe it's because, you know, I've only, you know, it's just my second budget, but I, I would like the answers and can I get the answers? So. Do I, not feel bad, Commissioner Slayball. You, um, uh, even when you ask for the answers and you ask for meetings, sometimes you don't get them, let alone we don't pay attention to them. I can tell you, I read every document uh, and the same thing if you just look at uh, some of the numbers that we supply just like i was talking about you you don't have actuals you don't have last year's actuals to compare when you look at our budget presentation you'll see previous actuals this year's budget um so it, it's 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 numbers but where and like you said um because i asked questions once before about things like how many are related to um, aviation how many are related to road patrol? How many are, and I got answers like, well, I can't give you that information because that's under the, you know, um, uh, security rules or whatever, you know. But then you read the spreadsheets and it says we have 28 sworn deputies, we have 258 deputies, you know. And then when you look at one report and it says this many deputies and another report says another, you just want, you expect all the numbers. If, if Miss Colleen there gave us budget reports and every page had a different number on it, you bet we'd be asking questions about why, why is that different. So they're legitimate questions, but let's, let's cut to the chase here. Let's, I'm, I'm just going to say it right now because I know it's coming. This is a political hot potato, okay? What we have happening here is, is we have folks out in the community saying, if you don't give the sheriff what he asked for with no questions asked, you're on American, you don't support law enforcement, and, uh, I, you know, and I'm going to make sure everybody knows that. Well, that's not the case because history speaks for itself, uh, particularly when I read that the Chronicle wrote an editorial once that said this board has never been supportive of law enforcement. That was a quote that they said about, <laughs> that they said about everybody setting up here now. I want you to know that, right? So that's, that's what you're dealing with. You, you're dealing with a political aspect of, I don't remember any time this board has not reached out and, and the sheriff said, I need this, this is what I'm going to do. And I said the last two years particularly, we didn't want to do anything that had the appearance of not supporting law enforcement. So even if there were questions, we did it. In my mind, that's when the request for increased officers should have started coming forward. You know, um, so anyway, j just so we know, and I, I'm prepared for it because once I asked some questions like this at a board meeting and I was accused of, of uh, questioning somebody's credibility and their integrity, and, and that has nothing to do with it. I mean, I can ask the attorney questions all day long and I'm not questioning her integrity. It's just, it's my job to ask questions. So yeah. all I'm saying to you, that's your job. Ask yeah. away, ask away. <laughs> Yeah, and you brought up a very good point yeah. because there is nothing that I would like more looking at all this is to see the employees paid a quality salary a, and make a quality, you know, have a good quality of life. And, and these people have sacrificed, these deputies sacrifice, they are dedicated, and this is not about trying to keep their pay down. I want to see, I would love this number to be true and that each of those 84 are getting $68,000. I truly would say I'm good. You know, if that's what we can afford as a county, I'm good. So pl please don't any of you think that I'm trying to be frugal or cheap. I just need answers. So thank you. Yes, sir. Well, I'll, I'll, you know, something else I want to throw in. You know, let's, let's, let's just all be real here, and uh, boating is seasonal, okay? 
So, uh, you know, last year when these issues come up and we decided to go another way, we it, didn't we work something out where they could borrow some of our boats on busy weekends and they could we go did. out and patrol? And, yeah, so, you know, the comments that were made that, uh, you know. So we so as chairman, I did sit, you know, try to work some things out, and it worked well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we do have weekends and we in, in scallop season, so, it, so it's seasonal. So, uh, again, going out and buying all this capital, uh, you know, to, to, to look good. Uh, and I'm not saying that in a, in, a, in a bad way, but I agree with Commissioner Carr. We don't need no offshore boats to, you know, because, listen, the uh, state line only goes so far and you get federal waters. <laughs> so, uh, it, but, but, but anyway, um, I, I hope that uh, the sheriff can answer the questions. And, and, uh, but, but, again, um, we are in an economy where people are struggling day in and day out to buy for and things like that for their kids. And um, I, I'm not sure this is the time to be uh, – trying to do things like this and, and again and, and w one more thing that I'll say I, I, I wish they could all get that also okay but you know um, here's what I can tell you uh, mr. Oliver how many um, how many people do we have in our organization mm, roughly seven or I'll say bottom <laughs> line is we have people in our organization uh, janitors and, and road maintenance and people that are, they make this they, they make the world turn here in Citrus County also so so um, you know, I, I think everybody's equal. Everybody picks their profession, and, and that's the, the, the way they go, and we appreciate what everybody does. But you got to appreciate what the, the other employees do. So, um, you know, I, I, that, that's the way I look at it. It takes everybody to make the wheel turn. And um, so I, I wish everybody could make $67,000, but unfortunately the world doesn't turn that way. But we got to look at our employees also uh, in, in making sure our um, integrity stays, stays up too. Yes, sir. I just need to know my goal on the 26th is to bring you a budget that's as flushed out as it can be okay because I know they're going to be further discussion and so I want to see where we can reach agreement where there are going to be differences so that we can minimize those points one of the issues is on slide 20 uh, do you all want to continue to carry these particular items uh, into the budget as uh, any of them, all of them, whatever uh, you, you want. You talking about the our, our, our request? Yes. None of them. Under the Board <laughs> of my, County my Commission. Is absolutely none of them. Um, you know, my travel cost is, is there. Um, I, don't, I don't believe I, I spent very little of it. Uh, the other commissioners are welcome to it. Um, uh, again, so, so uh, no way in hell would I support uh, th this list right here. Absolutely no. I, I support some of the list, but, you know, not all of it. Well, you want me, you want yeah, me to tell? Sure. I'm trying to find it, yeah. actually. Page 20. Oh, I got it. Thank you. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm okay with, uh, you know, the increase for the travel. I, I actually pay most of the travel myself. Um, and, um, but the, um, um, you know, I would like to talk more about the communication firm and see what's involved with that. And, and again, um, Doug asked for help, and if I say I'm not going to support that. Um, I told Doug he's not getting anybody from me, so I had no problem telling Doug no. So, uh, so it's his fault you're not right. getting help. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know, I would like to talk a little bit more about the communication firm and um, and and I would like some more information on the art professional so just to, just to say no we're not going to do that without a little more information I would like that okay anybody else yeah I'll chime in mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to support them this year uh, we have got um, uh, we've got too big of a bite uh, with uh, EMS, with mental health, and of course with the sheriff's office, um, those those are going to be a big lift this year. And it's not that I'm not supportive of these other some of these other things, but we have got we have got to try and keep this increase to as little as possible, and it will be an increase this year. So. Can I ask one more sure. question? Yeah. Did you find, Commissioner Kennard, any of you commissioners, if it, did you find in the budget from the sheriff where the m m Marine Patrol, couldn't get that out, Marine Patrol, um, I couldn't find any ask for that. So, again, I know you're saying you're going to support it across the board, but 
to me, it, this needs to be worked out. Because if it's just put in some other category, I couldn't even find it. So. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Um, just a minor correction. I didn't say I was going to support it across the board. Um, that uh, in, in general, I'm going to uh, I'm going to support it. I do have some questions. Okay. No, I didn't say it specifically. I believe that it is in the part of the increase in officers um, that some uh -huh. of them naturally would be uh, would be in the in the Marine uh, Patrol. And during the off season, they're you know, cycled to do other stuff. I would assume that in the dead of winter that we have fewer patrols out there than we do on July 1st, which is right around the corner. So, so it sounds to me you got at least three people that are saying no on the 302-873, Mr. Oliver. May I speak? Yes, you may. Um, I agree in um, the the substance of the issue that we have to cut things as much as we can this year, absolutely. Um, I would point out that the point of the art professional and the communications firm is to leverage the staff that we already have to be more clear in our communications with our citizens so that we don't use as much staff time as we do right now explaining ourselves over and over and over again. Um, with varying levels of success or not success. Um, the art professional, I think, is probably a pretty solid number. The communications firm, we might be able to put that off a year if um, Veronica had more help in uh, the PIO's office, or we could put off um, a large portion of the communications firm and just do uh, a little, make a little bit of headway on that. Um, I do think Doug needs help as evidenced by some recent issues. And um, the, travel for the travel for key staff and commissioners can wait a year as far as I'm concerned. But I would like the three commissioners that are um, opposed to the 302 to hear me that I am being um, cooperative and collegial in trying to reach a compromise on this. And um, I have long practice, again, of putting out pretty big budgets to clients and then the environment changes or something, the situation changes and then you come back to the table and you figure out what the highest and best use of the funds that you have. But again, our professional and some portion of the communicate or all of the communications firm but um, is intended to leverage the results of the staff that we already have and a big portion of the communications firm, if not all of it, could be put off a year. I'm, I will support that. Well, to me, we you've increased the budget. Then you, if you say you're going to cut it because you're only cutting it by what you've added to it, so you did not decrease the budget, right? So let's be clear about our description here. If you add 302.8 to it, and then you say, well, we're going to take the hit and we're going to cut the budget 302, you haven't because the, the 302 isn't in the budget. So. Yeah, you know, that it goes right back to what I said earlier. If you increase it and then you take something out and you say, see, we reduced the budget, no, you didn't. I, I just. Excuse I, me, I, reduce the ask. That's a fairly elementary observation that you're making there. Uh, right. And thank, and thank you. Know, again, um, I think many of us here have dealt with large budgets, okay? Uh, we understand how this works. This is not my first county budget, okay? Um, so. You know, I think we all understand how these budgets work. What I'm saying is the philosophical discussion that says you're going to go out and tell people their rent is going to go up because you're going to hire an art professional and a communication firm. Okay, that is this is not the year to do it. This is not the time to do it. Maybe in the future, uh, you know, you can make a valid case for that. But but I you know I'm hearing from people every day that are very upset, and even though they know it's not the county's fault, what they're dealing with, they hear these rumors that the county is going to be piling on with a tax increase, and, and people are not happy about that. So, um, and, and instead of people saying, sure, sure, just do it, I'm hearing, what about this, what about that? So there's questions being asked. Um, so, Mr. Oliver, I, I don't know that you're going to get any direction. Here's what I would suggest you do. We need to have something 
to start formulating this and not wait to the last minute. So earlier I uh, suggested let's send back out a letter saying, you know, to the constitutionals, thank you for submitting your budget. Uh, we're going to find this to be an extraordinarily tough budget year, and we're really asking you to stick to the guidelines that we've asked you to do, as most all the constitutionals have in the past, including the sheriff the last couple of years. Okay, So that would be my starting point. If we could get back to last year when the constitutionals came in and said, you asked us to do it. We did it, we said thank you, boom, next item, you know, and we can move right on through it. If we're gonna get down into, um, you know, the, these, um, uh, what do we add, what don't we add, and I think we, the only reason I say that is we've had lengthy conversation about re road resurfacing, about EMS, and mental health, and I think we're all on board with that. I don't think we're gonna get much any place else with this if we start adding more things to this, even knowing that um, as Commissioner Kennard said, it's going to be a lift even to get to those items today that, that we find crucial. You know? And in the end, it's going to have to be a trade off You're going to have to stand in front of the citizens and say, if you cut $300,000 from the sheriff and you give it to yourself, that's going to be a hard question to answer. Why did you do that? You know, why does why does the board of county commissioners get two more assistants, but the sheriff doesn't, or the clerk of the court doesn't, or whatever? So all I'm saying is we have always operated a very tight budget we're not cheap we find efficiencies we do what we can uh, and we try to find good people and pay them well and the answer is not just you know throwing money at, at problems and, I, and again I'll, I'll shut my mouth after this this is my last budget uh, there's no way I'm going to support the number that's laid out in front of us. I'll just bring you to that right now. And if the majority of the board does, fine. It'll be your legacy. You can live with it in September when the rest of the community shows up. Yes, sir. We'll start with you, and then we'll go back um, to agree, uh Agree 100% with what you just said. I, I will no way uh, support what's in front of us at, at this time either. Commissioner Kennard brought up some great points. Um, um, but, but I, I, you know, Commissioner Davis, I, I, I appreciate your comments, but I, I can't support that at this time because, again, uh, that, that's the question you're going to get, and it'll definitely be out there. But um, I, I just do not think this is the time, and I'm just going to keep harping this. And one thing I'll say, uh, you know, the Chronicle did write a good editorial uh, on Sunday about, uh, you know, the, the Sheriff's Department having to sell their budget to us and, you know, not doing scare tactics and things like that that's been out there. Uh, you know, so hopefully everybody will stay professional and we can work to a compromise. Um, but again, I, I'm with you. There's no way in hell that I will support what's in front of us uh, and try to put this on the backs of young families uh, trying to survive, trying to get to work. They're trying to put gas in their car just to get to work, to make the money. And if you guys don't see that, uh, uh, so, so no way in hell will I, will I even think about what's in front of us. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Do, do you have any other direction? For yeah, the I just think that um, um, it was just one ask of one assistant, not two. I wanted to make that clear that nobody's asking for a bunch of staff. But um, also, our communication for the county is not strong, and that's why I supported the communication part. Because the sheriff is out there, has been out there for months. I get the emails. We all get the emails. And what is truly raising the millage is EMS, the sheriff. Um, you know, you can, okay, you take out that, that uh, millage for the uh, budget request for the additional request for the BOCC. There's a lot here that they'll say, you raised our taxes, you did this, but it's EMS, the sheriff, um, you know, uh, property appraisers minimal uh, the clerk's office even has a little bit of millage there so maybe if we had better communications they wouldn't be coming to us and saying you give the sheriff what he needs he only needs 252 dollars for me and because they've gotten out there and they've explained it we're not doing a good job of that so that was my pitch for the communication. But I do not agree with all of this either because this is tight. And like you said, people have to make rent, and I'm very cognizant of that. So, okay. Commissioner Davis, final comments. Yes, it's been six months since we were asked to put these things on here. I've already said that the environment has changed since December, and I am cognizant of the struggle of um, many families out there. Um, but I agree with you. Chairman Kitchen, about being efficient. You said we're not cheap, we're efficient. My whole point on the communications is that it drives efficiency with the current staff that we have. 
So the, to answer, why are we hire, why would we hire a, and let's not call it an art professional because art is a airy fairy word to the people, right? It's like, what is that? It's just art. No, it's a communications professional. Visuals communicate very, very well. They communicate better. A well, picture's worth a thousand words, right? So this is an actual real way for us to leverage what we are doing in the county to have better communications with our citizens and a lot less back and forth with staff. A lot less, I promise you. I'm staking my career on that, um, that assertion. So I would just ask that you um, hear me. That's it. Okay, Mr. Kenner, you get the last word. Great. <laughs> we're trying to come up with what we're going to tell Randy to take from here. So. Okay. Um, I'm not questioning, um, again, whether or not some of these things would be um, productive or increase efficiency, but this just isn't the year for it, and I can't support it. Um, our sheriff's office... Um, is losing sworn officers to neighboring communities uh, because our salaries are not um, uh, competitive. Um, there are uh, there are sworn deputies that are leaving um, law enforcement altogether because there are other careers that they can jump right into that are paying more than what we're paying people to protect us are getting paid. Um, I want to see that change. I want to see that change for the Citrus County Sheriff's Office. My understanding, and I don't know this to be fact, but my understanding is that the, um, the last graduating class of folks from the, um, from the uh, Law Enforcement Training Academy that we have here that none of those graduates stayed in the county. They all went for higher paying jobs outside of the county. That's a problem. And um, I believe that it is, uh, uh, that, that it's um, not entirely our responsibility to fix that. It's our responsibility to fund um, the fixes reasonably, uh, but it's also incumbent upon the sheriff to figure out why these folks are being trained here, but then leave why the folks that, that are on the force are leaving. Uh, it can't be entirely money. I'm sure a big part of it is, but that's, that's a problem that needs to be fixed. Um, the numbers that we got um, uh, and that I've heard out there is that the, you know, the uh, sheriff has in his budget that 1.7, so 1 point, yeah, 1 1.7 um, officers per thousand people in the population. Uh, is a state average. We're at um, we're at uh, 1.51, I think was the number. Um, the difference there, given depending on what our population is or what what you figure our population is, uh, the difference there is roughly 28 to 30 deputies short of where we should be to be at the state average. Uh, our community is growing. Um, my focus is to um, to try and get there. Uh, with the constitutional uh, budgets submitted, and um, I really want to see us take out those capital costs. I know I, I've been beating that drum for several years now, and we d we've done that in the past, so that uh, when we increase the budgets by a certain percentage next year, we're not increasing that percentage on those capital costs, those one-time costs. And I would like to see uh, what we can cover with impact fees. So that's all I've got. So Randy, can we send a letter back out basically saying that um, the sooner we get our questions and concerns answered, the closer we can get to coming to an agreement to putting the final budget together? And um, so, you know, uh, again, I've, I, you've heard from several of us where we stand. Um, I'll tell you, my big issue with the sheriff I, and I understand what Com Commissioner Kennard is saying, and I agree with him, but here's the problem. Um, I would love if the sheriff would say, here's my audited payroll from 2020. Here's my audited payroll from 2021. And here, when I finish this fiscal year, I'm going to give you my audited payroll from this year. Because Commissioner Slay bought the same thing up. He wants to put in, boom, 32 people. He's not going to hire all those people on the first day, but that's going to be in his budget. 
So what happens to that money? You know, those are realistic questions. You wouldn't run your business that way. You know, you wouldn't go in and say, well, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm planning on hiring eight people this year, so I'm just going to go ahead and start paying them what I would be paying those other people. So uh, the problem I have with this is coming back to just what we're held to. We, why can't we pass a sales tax? Because the citizens don't trust us to spend the money the way we told them we would. I don't know a single citizen that I've talked to, not a single one that I've talked to, that is opposed to paying our law, en law enforcement people higher salaries. Not a single one, okay? But every single one I've talked to said, how do I know that's where the money's going? And there's, there's the issue as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. So, so we, ha we have to come back to say, just like we promised people with the sales tax, we're going to show you what we collect, we're going to show you what roads we did, and this is where the money went. We need to be able, we do that with our budget, we need to do that with others. And if I can't stand and go out and tell the citizens that, that uh, hold me accountable, that I'm watching their tax dollars that way, that I can tell them I've verified, you know, as I said before, uh, we, we all try to do the same thing, but we do it ourselves. That's why we have ourselves audited. We want to make sure that we're doing what we said we want done. So, um, so again, Sheriff's Office is a big department. How does he know that every dollar that he's directed to go to a certain thing, you know, has gone there? So that's, that's the, I think that's the crux for me, just so we know. I know we spent a lot of time with the Sheriff because that's the biggest ask, that's the biggest lift. So anyway, do you got what you think you need to start crafting something? Um, yes. Uh, if I could get any questions that you all may have by the close of business tomorrow, then we'll compose a letter, send it to him, and I'll give him, let's say, a week to respond. That right. seems to be somewhat reasonable. I think so. And if you could, too, even with the other constitutional, say we appreciate what you've done. Is there any way in this tight budget year you're going to be able can you can you get down to that? that original what we asked it to. If they can't, fine, but you know, that I think we need to ask. Uh, and, yes. and, and very good point. And I, you know, I, I actually agree with so much that you said, but nobody met the, the bar of the 6.5%. Right. Nobody did. Oh, one did. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> oh, well, we got We did. We, we did. Have, we we always do. We did. Have so. EMS. Yeah. <laughs> And one other thing to keep in mind, again, I know we know this, but let's, sometimes we have to remind ourselves, pe the people in Citrus County wanted the EMS, yeah, yeah, okay? Yes, and yes. the people in Citrus County wanted enhanced fire, okay? And the people in Citrus County want the uh, mental health issue dealt with. So it wasn't like we just sat up here and said, well, I want this and I want that. You know, we were listening to the citizens when we said, okay, it's going to cost. You're willing to pay for it? And they said yes. So, you know, and, and, I, and I'll throw this out there, and I, it can't be done this year, but me and Mr. Oliver, and I'm sure he maybe he's had this conversation with others, put an MSTU on road patrol. Amen. All right, so then he's got, he's constitutionally has to come in and uh, report. He just can't. You know, I mean, there can't be any things hiding. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's ways to uh, I move think that's forward an idea. to to mm -hmm. make him accountable for what he uh, for what he does, and then the money you raise on the MSTU for road patrol, you back it out. I mean, uh, there's the, ways the, to do it. Is that something right. that you all want me to put into motion? It, it would be next year to get set I, up. I would make that I, I motion. I would love to make, make that motion. motion. You, the money you raise, you back it out, and then he's got to he's got to show us those numbers. And and uh, and you want to talk about transparency? We're going to have transparency. Absolutely. That way we know. You know. So if because uh, that'll tell you a lot what that right number now. is. Well, What's that? Yeah. You're three right now. Can yeah. we do it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have what you need on that issue, Mr. Oliver. Yes. Okay, you ready to move on then to G2, okay. the benchmark survey. Doug, Doug, let's make a copy of this from Randy. Okay, this, this is just the big broad picture and we want to find out what, if any, of these you want to consider. Uh, obviously, and this is my per first part of this is my personal opinion. My personal opinion is is that the market here has been dictating that we do uh, affordable housing for seniors, and that's largely what's been done. Having worked a long time ago with uh, our for our housing authority, uh, I know that people like the senior population better because they pay the rent and they don't beat up the property. Okay, and. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That was a fact. Uh, 
but uh, we have a, a big gap as it relates to workforce housing. Uh, some of the things that other communities have done, and we gave you the benchmarks for some other communities, a little bit surprised at what came about, but, uh, you know, is on all new developments, do you want to require a minimum set aside? This is done in, in, uh, in certain communities, a minimum set aside that needs to be for affordable workforce housing. One of the things you have to consider when you do that, though, is you've got to have somebody that's going to sit on compliance to make sure that it stays in that category. Uh, but many communities will say 5 or 10% of a given new development has to be that, and sometimes communities give them a density bonus. In other words, instead of uh, four units or five units an acre, they can have six units an acre to be able to do that because land cost is obviously a consideration. Uh, another option was to uh, develop a housing authority, which is uh, a, a major undertaking. Mm -hmm. Uh, it permits you to do multifamily mortgage revenue bonds and or other programs through a housing authority uh, and do that and uh, administer those particular programs. But again, it takes that. And then the, the final question is, do you want to designate? Right now, we only use uh, ship funds, and I think we do a pretty effective job on those ship funds to try to leverage, you know, various developments. I know there's one that... Uh, uh, is going on right now. There's going to be a meeting Thursday, uh, but they plan to apply for $300,000 in ship funding if if they if they get a, a rezoning request is answered. But we only use ship funds. Some other communities use other funding that they have to be able to uh, again encourage uh, development for low mod income housing. So uh, I'm at this point just trying to get a gauge for. Uh, you know, what tools you all may like to have in the toolbox and where you'd like to go as it relates to these specific issues. Mr. Oliver, I'll give you my gauge in 10 seconds. Um, I don't want to do anything that competes against the private sector in the free marketplace. So I'm against uh, the set-asides, I'm against the development of the housing authority, and I'm against dedicated general funds. I would support density bonuses utilizing PUDs. That's something we can do that will help from a government perspective. So. And that's I'll my say, point. I, 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 I'm in, that's my perspective also. I mean, I just want to think place. And me too. I can't even believe okay, it. Okay, we got three thinking that. Oh. What about down this end? <laughs> it, um, uh, that certainly makes sense. Um, but it also looks like the, um, the private world is getting this figured out with some government cooperation. You know, the city, city of Inverness, I've said this many times. Yep. Uh, seems to be headed in the right direction. So, um, you know, I, I would favor the density bonuses as well. Um, and let's, you know, let's see where, where these private entities go with it. Um, there's, there's some stuff in the works. There's yeah. some stuff in sure. the pipeline uh, that are going to, that, that is going to help. Yes, there is. Mr. Davis, any thoughts? Agree. Great. Okay. How was that? We got through that. That was good. Okay. Let's move on then to, uh, you, do you need any action on that or is that just kind of no, a direction fine. thing? Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was going to ask. I, yeah. I think that, you know, that's on there for action. I mean, don't you think we ought to do an action on that and see if there's anybody here to speak on it? these programs and minimum, let's see. I don't see where, I mean, you're asking for us. Okay, to it's fine. I mean, I'm just. Well, I think we're leaving the door open. We're saying that's our preference, but as I think we all agree, if somebody comes forward with some super program or idea or something somebody else has tried, you know, we're not going to say, oh, no, we've adopted a policy that says we don't do that. I mean, I think it's we're trying to keep the door open. I just don't think you should be wasting a lot of time trying to figure out how to dedicate general funds to offset the costs of, you know, those kind of things. So. Mr. Okay. Chair, yes. Well, like in order to implement the density bonuses, that would take a change to the the LDC. LDC so right. you'll see it come back. Right, yeah. but uh, that in that form, not today. Like we don't need to vote on anything today, right? Okay. All right. Then is that it, Mr. Oliver? Anything right. else? That is it. Okay. Um, let's see. So we're done with all the public hearings. Uh, there's no advisory board announcements. Uh, committee reports. We'll start with Commissioner Kennard. You got anything for us? No, sir. Commissioner Davis? No, sir. Commissioner Slaybach? Um, just that, um, you know, I did, um, had the meeting with the Veterans Advisory Board. I went. We couldn't get a quorum. 
Uh, we dealt with the transportation disadvantage um, in this agenda, and we had the MPO. Um, things are moving along, so that's all, right. all I have. Very good. Commissioner Carhan, anything? Yeah. I was supposed to have a TBRPC meeting yesterday, but there was a lack of a quorum, so that we didn't have a meeting, and the next one won't be until August. So perhaps later on when we talk about an appointment of the TBRPC, that'll help out in that regard. Okay, let's see. Commissioner Carnahan, you got anything for us? Mm, no, I don't. Okay, let's see. Commissioner Kennard, do you have something? Yeah, I do. I do. Let me back no, up. Okay. I, I absolutely do. Hold um, on, Commissioner Cardi. Well, um, I'm back. sorry. So <laughs> I don't know if any of the rest of you got any uh, complaints. And I know the board has talked about this and uh, about the uh, airport road and the signage for don't park it on the right of way. Um, we talked about that in the um, in a workshop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to go out there and just and put them up at this time. Um, and, and we and we did and no, nothing against staff or anything. But um, I, I think it's premature. Um, there's nobody parking on, there's no trucks parking on them roads, okay, blocking all this tra you know, traffic going into the airport, first and foremost. Uh, you know, so the racetrack uh, uh, guys are, are very concerned about that. Uh, a lot of citizens, you know, have really complained to them. They've reached out to me. Um, but again, I, I think in time, when, when the industrial part takes off, uh, that, that could be a concern. But I, I don't think at this time those signs should be out there, and I think they need to be removed. So that, that's my that's 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 a concern, uh, but I, I think I think you, anyway that's, that's where I'm at. Okay, Mike, Mike, you wrote a story on that, so, and I and I gotta agree with you 100 percent because I, uh, I I've been on the phone and quite a bit about that. Okay, Commissioner Kennard. Yeah, this this came out of a um, an email that I that I received from an individual about the overall condition of the um, trails out in the forest. Um, I was going to have it on their last meeting's agenda, but I hadn't had a chance to get out there and drive them. Um, in a vehicle that you drive day to day to work, you don't want to drive them <laughs> because there truly are a number of the, uh, the trails out there that are a mess. The upkeep on them is not good. And I think their, um, I believe their, their regional representative in Brooksville or whatever that the title is, they agree that they're not getting the funding, they're not getting the personnel, they don't have the equipment to get out and maintain these trails. And so um, uh, I think I, I would make a motion that we, uh, that we send a letter asking forestry uh, to do what's necessary to upkeep these trails, to take care of them. There's a lot of folks enjoy using them. Um, you know, naturally the, you know, they're, they're um, off-road vehicles enjoy using them. There, uh, you know, people out there hunting enjoy using them. There's horseback riders, people that that run, that jog, that hike, and um, uh, that's forestry's responsibility. And I think we need to send a letter to them and ask them to maintain I'll, it. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Kennard, second by Commissioner Carnahan. Have you seen the draft letter? You're yes. in agreement with it. Yes. You like that says what you wanted to say. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, is there any public comment on this motion? Yes, ma'am. Rebecca Bays, um, Inverness, Florida. Commissioners, I, I'm not sure where we stand anymore, but those are state lands. And at one time we used to get PILT payments. Is that anything that's still applicable? Uh, you know how we do it. Once you ask the <laughs> questions, we'll answer all the Sorry. things. Like, that's okay. Anything else? Nope, Any other questions? It. Okay, thank you very much. Randy? Once population exceeds 150,000, you no longer get them. There you go. Uh, so that's, the, that's one of the bad things about growing, I guess, is that we, go, we would exceed this. Uh, but I would note that this is state property. They're responsible for maintaining it. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Commissioner Kennard said, when I talked with, with them, uh, they indicated that they were down on their staffing and they, they weren't really able to do it. Uh, the person that made uh, sent the original email, she's the wife of a park ranger that lives on the property. Uh, it's a little unclear to me from reading the email whether they didn't like the fact vehicles were even there at all, but we didn't get into that because uh, I talked with the forestry service people and he said uh, the licensed vehicles are permitted in there. Do we, is it, do you think it matters? Um, should anybody else get copied on this letter? Uh, probably 
copy the head of forestry in Tallahassee would be my suggestion. So we're sending it to the center manager. So there's somebody above them we should copy as well. Yeah, there's somebody at the state level. Okay. So and we may want to send it to our two representatives, but that's up to you all. You got a problem with that, Commissioner Kennard? No, nope, not at all. Commissioner no, Kennard? No, 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 okay. Okay, so that would then would be the motion that we would send a letter including those people, correct? Yes. Okay. We got that? Then we'll do that then? Okay. Any other discussion from the board? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that <coughs> passes unanimously. Anything else, Commissioner Kennard? No, not right now. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Davis, anything tonight? No. Commissioner Slaybaugh? I had the opportunity to um, do a Zoom class with the Girl Scouts here in <laughs> Citrus County. We're really trying to um, have a, a, a bigger presence with the Girl Scouts. I was a Girl Scout. And uh, I was able to help um, six young ladies get their government patch. So that was the perk of being a commissioner. Found some something I, you know, that there's, there's little moments of happiness. And I, that was one of them. And I wanted to share it with you all. So thank you. Okay. Yes, I just I just want to say something real quick, not, not only about it. You know, I, I talked about the signs. Do, do, do I need to put it on there for a vote, or maybe can we get it to get sent to Well, I think you need to bring it back because we right. gave direction to, to put them right, up. That's fine. No, 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 that's why I just right. want to make okay. sure. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Not a problem. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. So you got anything else no, just other than that? That's the Girl Scout pouch. Okay. The government right. pouch. So Very thank you. good. Very good. Okay, I have one item on here, which I think is self-explanatory since we've talked about it before, but it's to approve and authorize the chairman to sign a letter of support of nominating Jeffrey J. J. Grow to the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. The only thing I would like to insert, if we could, in the draft letter is where it said the Citrus County Board of County Commissioners unanimously recommends. Okay, because we know how it is. As long as it's a 3-2 vote, <laughs> the board recommends it. Okay, so if that's not a problem, if we could just insert that word, I would like the authority to sign this and send it so it's fine so i need somebody to make a motion to do that i'll make a motion to okay. do that with the, the word unanimous inserted second. thank you so commissioner slave makes a motion commissioner Kennard makes the second is there any public comment okay commissioner is there anything else all in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed say nay that's done that's really about the only thing i had for you uh, county attorney you have something for us tonight I do. We have been uh, asked by our attorney to let you know that he uh, needs an opportunity to meet with you regarding a settlement, and we're asking to set an attorney-client session for June 27th at 8.30. I think it may need to be the 26th because that meeting was moved, I believe. That is a Monday meeting instead of the... Uh Right. Wait oh, minute. you're right. But yeah. it is June 27th. I apologize. You're correct. Yes. So the 27th is a Monday. Yes. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Denise is 100% <coughs> right. All right. All right. She's kept her record alive. There, so, all right. So Monday, uh, June 27th at 8:30. Now we also did we not reschedule some other things for that day too? Uh, what did we do with the judges? Didn't we have a day that we had to move around for them too? No, that's in July. So this is the only thing that morning, or do we have another workshop? No, you've got another workshop, which is the TBRPC is going to do the... And that's at 9? Nine. 9. So 8.30 is good with you? I mean, at 30 minutes, you think we'll do it? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Chair? Yes, sir. I do have one question that I think mm -hmm. we all need to be updated on. Where are we with the code building and moving forward with the court systems on that? Can we finish mine? Yeah, let me, I was going to say, I, I, I need, I need a motion. So, so move. Okay, I need a motion so to move. approve. I, do I have a second? Second. Okay, so Mr. Nero Slaybox seconds. Is there any public comment on item P1? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, any other board <laughs> discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. <laughs> and that passes unanimously. Now, Commissioner Carnahan. Yeah, wh where are we at with the Coke building? Just so uh, we I will ready. check. I think that uh, Judge... Uh, the judge that's taking over for Judge Carney, I think he signed off on that about two weeks ago, and I think that they're in full-fledged design. But Good. let me check, and I'll right, send no, out I just make the sure update okay. on that. Anything else, Madam Attorney? That's what I was interrupted for. 
you know, as we get, I can't speak for Commissioner Carnahan, but I know as I get older, if I don't ask it then, I forgot it. You know, it just I'm sure right that's what it was. Yes, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. that was and what that it was. that is it, because that's I'm it. not as old as them, but I still, <laughs> oh, okay. get, I lose I'm my thought. I'm going to start that memory. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, we are now to the last segment of Open to the Public. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak to the board? Yes, sir. See, Gaston, you do get to talk. <laughs> Uh, G1, I want to. Is this to you some, or the. Uh, the Citrus County Builder Association, okay. you have a letter. It should have a letter and also. So you got five letters. minutes. Yep. Um, some of the issues that we brought up were the small house subdivisions and container houses. And those issues have not been addressed. That's stuff that's going to be put in the LDC. And then your bonuses for using a PUD. If you don't make the bonuses high enough to offset the cost, it won't happen. They'll just come in under regular subdivision regs. So when you start looking at all that, um, staff needs better direction of a draft document before it goes in front of the PDC so that we're not going there twice. We're not forgetting something, but we're not putting something in that we don't need. So I would make sure that you, if you don't uh, consult with a stakeholder group, that you at least run drafts by stakeholder groups so that you're not wasting your time. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, we'll speak to that in a minute then. Okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the board at this time? And you have three minutes. You don't have to ask I'll a 10 second me. question. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> um, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to see this. I actually ran across it, but um, Rebecca Bay's in Vernon's Florida mm -hmm. for the record. Um, number one, I was kind of curious on the first responder property tax relief that the governor provided. Do you know how that's going to impact your budget, number one? Um, and number two, I actually ran across something that President Biden uh, released for his uh, proposed budget for year 23, and it supports public safety and law enforcement. And the first portion of it <clears throat> is... Um, 884 million for community violence and 10 million for illness and disabilities, public safety neighborhoods, 40 million and juvenile justice programs of 760 million and hiring additional law enforcement is 537 million. So I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look into that. And he specifically says in his information under this, um, Local leaders in cities, towns, and villages may be wondering what parts of the bill they should keep their eye on, and below are the local government priorities included in the president's budget. So this may be something that you could look at. I don't know how this works with um, the sheriff. He, he applies for grants and gets them and doesn't have to tell the board, or if you apply, them, or apply for them and get them and then pass them on. But it also addresses in that same budget for local governments um, Increases for in environmental cleanup, uh, water infrastructure, community resilience, uh, local transportation projects, and affordable housing projects. So $50 billion for affordable housing. All right. Thank you very much for the information. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak at this time? Anyone else? Okay, we'll close public comment. Um, let's see, on uh, Mr. Hall's points that we, I assume we use the crab board or somebody we keep in this. Movement. We'll set up a stakeholders group somewhat similar to Stormwater. It'll be, uh, it'll be a different group because there's a different makeup of people, but we'll do that. Okay, so we will have them, because I understand his point, get everybody involved in the beginning instead of getting into this and hitting a brick wall as we go through yeah, the process. I, I right? think that the, the balancing act that you, we've got to be careful with is, is there's some established neighborhoods. You experience this with presidential estates, but mm -hmm. they don't have any deed Listen. restrictions out there. So the question becomes, you know, do you want container homes there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that in keeping in character with the neighborhood? And those are some things that you're going to have to decide as we go through that. Uh, as it relates to uh, Rebecca Bays, the sheriff's office uh, identifies the grant opportunities. They do the grant paperwork. We review it, make sure that it's uh, fine, and then we send it on to the board. We currently have a $25 million grant still pending with the federal government for some low 
uh, income areas and some economic development, which we've not heard back one way or the other yet. Okay. So in answer to Ms. Bay's question, probably should let the sheriff be aware of these opportunities and see what he would like to apply for since that's where it all starts. So. Maybe we put that in, a, uh, in the question we need to ask. <laughs> Yes, yes. Randy, is that this what I screenshotted last night and sent to you in an email about the two hundred million for the law enforcement and first responders pay raises? I don't remember what the title of that was. The one that was sent to me was uh, the Patrick Leahy Vest Grant program, which is an ongoing program. Uh, oh, this was from the state of yeah, Florida. I, yeah, I don't remember. Okay, that's all right. But uh, that, that would be one of my questions then, too. How, how many? I'll write it down. Forget it. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, well, we get into that with transportation, did we not? Did, we, did the state not come and tell the MPO that there's all this money out there that law enforcement can apply for, and they were begging law enforcement to apply for it? Yeah. So yeah. Those, are, those are the kind of questions that we need to keep putting out there. They pursuing every one of those grants possible so the, uh, see I remembered when you talked was, I listened I yeah listened. it was it was, <laughs> uh, it was interesting that uh, and I think I said at the time that our, our uh, Hernando County uh, colleagues were a little disturbed that uh, the, their uh, uh, sheriff had not applied for any of them mm -hmm. now we had we mm -hmm. had, uh, uh, Citrus County Sheriff's Office had applied for a number of them I think motorcycle safety and some different things like that but mm -hmm. so thankfully okay. we were able to um, be carried in a nice light during that conversation well we always appreciate information on grants available and funding and we always try to check into them so and we know how it is usually there's some strings attached or you know whatever but doesn't hurt to try and go for them right okay uh any other comments on the citizen input from any of the commissioners anything else okay well, then, let's see, our upcoming meetings will be um, June 27th, Monday, June 27th, at 1 o'clock, and we've already talked about the workshops in front of that. Our next regular meeting after that will be uh, Tuesday, July 12th, and then Tuesday, July 26th, all at 1 p.m. in this building. Uh, in case you're interested, we will be um, recessing this meeting, not adjourning it, because we'll be back here at 5.01 to deal with some... 501 issues, right? Okay. I got to tell you, even people that I've that I've spent a lot of time with lately, that um, um, they even know what a 501 is. I have them look at me and go, "You got any 501s tonight?" And I go, "Hey, there you go. You're picking up on the terminology." So with that said, we'll be in recess until 501. It's 501. Let's get this show on the road here. We're going to reconvene our meeting, and our first uh, item up tonight is going to be CPA AAPUD 22-07. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Madam Attorney, you yes. want to um, do your ex partes and all that type of stuff? Yes, sir. With regard to CPA AAPUD-27-07, have you had any ex parte communications you need to disclose? And we'll start with Commissioner Carney. Do we, Carney do we know if, no. if Commissioner Davis is going to be here? Yes, she should be. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And at the conclusion of this hearing, you're going to be asked to consider two ordinances, uh, Atlas Amendment and a Comprehensive Plan Amendment. The first is the Atlas Amendment. It is an ordinance of Citrus County, Florida, political subdivision of the state of Florida, many in Citrus County land use Atlas map by redesignating approximately 5.1 acres from the medium density residential district with a planned unit development and the professional services office district with a plan unit development to the general commercial district with plan unit development for a rehabilitation hospital providing for conflicts providing for modification that may arise from consideration at public hearing providing for severability providing for scrivener's errors or providing for an effective date and the comprehensive plan amendment is an ordinance of citrus county florida political subdivision in the state of florida many the citrus county future land use map by redesignating approximately 5.1 acres from the medium density residential district and the professional services office district to the general commercial district providing for applicability providing for severability providing for inclusion providing for scrivener's errors providing for modification that may arise from consideration at public hearing and providing for an effective date and i believe this one is mr pigeon yes mr, mr. pigeon, pigeon. It's here for sir. the applicant. 
Good evening. Good evening. Never miss up an opportunity to come say hello and give you some, hopefully some, some continued good news with this project as we move it forward and hopefully a good favorable for the county. Chuck Pigeon with Pigeon Adora, uh, 925 Southeast 17th Street, Ocala, Florida, here representing CR 486 LLC, the current landowner. Um, try to be brief and we'll just kind of run through a little bit. Um, I'm sure you probably read the press releases and uh, other information that was made to the public, but we'll be here to really answer any questions after my little presentation if you have any. So if you don't mind, um, just tell you a little bit more about you know, what we we'll really have going on here. The, the project itself uh, is a property that's going to be sold once we get through the whole process if it's successful and the purchaser is Sanders Trust and the operator and implementer of this project uh, when it goes forward to actually run the facility is Clear Sky Health. Uh, pretty good size organization uh, mainly um, in Texas, Louisiana, and New Mexico. They've got facilities in Arizona and so on uh, around. Uh, they actually have a couple of the facilities that they are looking at seriously in Florida but uh, we're proud to say this is the first facility in Florida for this folks and um, I think Citrus County uh, has really shown why it was selected first uh, it's been a pleasure to work so far with everyone and staff on this one so uh, with that it's a physical rehabilitation facility uh, it is to provide inpatient as well as out of the uh, facility outpatient post discharge care um, a few statistics uh, on average, they'll do about 650 uh, per year uh, treatments for individuals, 24-7. Uh, and they have an estimated, um, we'll start with about 70 some odd full-time jobs. Uh, and uh, should they get up to the full 40-bed facility, they'll have about 100 jobs. Those, those uh, employment um, positions will be on average of about 75,000. Uh, if the economy keeps going, it'll keep going with that. But right now, they're averaging about seventy-five thousand per uh, per employee. So I think it's you know pretty reasonable for for the county. Right. Moving on, uh, just to give you an idea, this is the corner uh, just east of the YMCA is the facility. Staff probably get a little more detail about that later. It's uh, currently open pasture, uh, and it is part of an original approved um, PUD with an overlay. And again, staff will go over that. This this site was. Uh, slated for both an ACLF and for um, office uh, facilities, uh, and we want to convert that now to a GNC um, hospital facility. Next slide gives you a little more information about just where it is. Um, you can see it kind of overlay on the aerial. It's just east of the YMCA. Uh, there's already a turnout uh, position there. Uh, good thinking ahead of time by the county and by the public works department and the road builders. Uh, and made that turn out specifically to service a property like this. Uh, next slide. Just a little more detail. Um, as a planned uh, site, uh, we are putting a lot on one piece of property uh, and it's fitting quite well. Uh, and we're not wasting any property, if you put it that way. It's 5.25 acres total. 5.1 acres is currently being rezoned. There's another. Uh, sliver of property it's a 10 foot wide strip between the YMCA and and the physical ownership boundary uh, which is um, also going to be incorporated into this site but it's really more of a green space it's currently the county's or uh, part of the county's utility easement it'll remain that way pretty much undisturbed uh, we'll probably enhance it with some landscaping and natural vegetation but um, that 10 foot strip gets added into the 5.1 and for a total of 5.25 acres uh, roughly 45,000 square feet is the first phase of construction. Uh, if they were to add 10 more beds later, it'll be around 3,000 square feet added to it. The uh, county water and sewer is available. Uh, we're taking advantage of using that and uh, we'll be glad to pay some connection fees. The stormwater management is all on site. Uh, in the back of the site toward the uh, back side, there's a stormwater retention pond uh, toward the back. Good soils. The access drive I mentioned is right off of Canter Road 46, and we will initially begin with a two-lane paved uh, roadway to get in there. Eventually, as development builds all around it, the vision is it'll eventually be a four-lane um, roadway into that whole area of the county. The uh, landscaping has already been designed to meet county standards and use all the Florida-friendly 
type landscape procedures. Uh, although reclaimed water is right adjacent to the site, the reclaimed water line that goes to Black Diamond, um, should it ever become available, they may be interested to tap in, but we know right now it's not available for public use like that. And uh, we will provide cross access easement Right now, the YMCA has a cross-access easement 24 foot wide in front of the YMCA. We will continue that all the way through uh, so that um, people can get to that intersection uh, and that median opening at 486. Uh, next slide. You may have seen this, but this is an artist rendering uh, very, very close to what's anticipated to uh, be out there. Uh, it is a sort of a modern type looking building, but yet kind of fits the, the character of the area. Uh, the landscaping, um, don't get too excited about that. It's a little bit uh, less than what's inspected. Uh, there's going to be more landscaping to meet your code. Uh, the next slide, please. Same thing with this one. It's sort of an aerial view. So at the back of this, the facility is uh, all the patient rooms, and they are private patient rooms. Uh, the middle of the facility is uh, the gymnasium area and the therapeutic type area. And the front, obviously, is the drop-off entry to the front. Um, Again, uh, sidewalks uh, along the current 486. Uh, there'll be a lot more landscaping uh, than shown on this rendering right here um, to meet your code. It's a 25-foot buffer uh, landscaping along 486 we're proposing. And so far, through the process of working with staff, it looks like uh, that'll be able to stay. We won't need to encroach on that for any reason. And with that, uh, just thank you for your time. I'm here to answer any questions on behalf of the client, uh, on behalf of Clear Sky, and uh, they're excited. Uh, hopefully, uh, if all goes well, they would look to get under construction uh, by the end of summer, and it'll take about 11 months to build the facility, provided the uh, supply is available. And we're hearing workers. <laughs> lots of different stories these days, but uh, uh, they are, are hoping and planning on an 11-month, one-year schedule to open the doors if, if need be. Okay. So Board, any questions of the applicant? <laughs> Thanks, sir. Right. Thank you. Are we ready? Let's go to. We are, and the applicant has actually done a lot of the presentation, so this will be fairly short. Perhaps, okay. Um, as he pointed out, this is on 486, directly next to the YMCA. In a future meeting, you will see uh, this is part of a much larger parcel that goes all the way over to 491, and you'll see a commercial shopping center coming before you as a PUD on a later meeting on this same parcel. Um, they are already in platting to create this parcel for this particular site. And this is the existing zoning, MDR and PSO, with a, with a master plan in place, and MDR is to the rear. And as he talked about, this is a still active, still valid at least, uh, master plan that was adopted, not there, um, never constructed. So they'll be overlaying this particular area for office and multifamily. And he just showed you the concept plan. I don't need to go over that. And this is their site plan. Now, um, he's talked about this 45,000 square feet of uh, area plus a 3,000 square foot expansion. There are two deviations that were recommended for approval by the planning board. The first one is along 486. Um, the code requires a 25 foot type C buffer. And as you heard from Mr. Pigeon, they are trying to accommodate that, which is what we would prefer on 46, trying to keep that more of a gateway area with the parkway coming in. Um, however, they might, um, they are asking if they have to reduce it, they do a 15 foot type D buffer, which is a heavier buffer without a wall, don't want a wall there. So um, the planning board was amenable to that particular deviation. The other deviation is in the parking lot landscaping. Um, our code requires 400 square feet on each of those islands. Um, they are trying to accommodate that, but they may be able to only do 350 in some of the areas. Again, the planning board with the overall concept was recommending approval on that. So the planning board did hear this on May 5th, 2022. They recommended approval with 10 conditions. Could you go back quickly to the existing zoning? It might have been your third slide in. Mm -hmm. um, That. Okay, so what's, um, I guess we call that east um, to the right, that is currently uh, zone commercial there? The with, with that master plan in place that you saw that never got built, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions of staff at this time? Okay. Does the applicant have any questions of staff? Any questions of staff? Mr. Pigeon, did you have any? No, I do not. 
Okay. Um, all right. So um, we'll go to public input at this time. Public openness to public comment. Is there anyone here to speak in favor or opposed to this proposed um, uh, application? Anyone here to speak in favor or opposed? Third and final time. Anyone to speak in favor or opposed? Okay, we're going to close the public hearing. Commissioners, what is your... Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that we approve CPA-A-PUD-22-07. And that, and that includes the 10, ten. with the 10 conditions? With the 10 conditions, yes, okay. sir. All right. Okay, so we had a motion by Commissioner Carnahan, second by Commissioner Kennard. Is there any other board discussion? Okay, so all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes 4 0. <coughs> okay, bless you. Whoever that was. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. That wraps that one up. Thank you very much. We'll move on to, um, believe we can. Oh, yeah, 505 CPA AA PUD 2205. Yes, Mr. Chair, and with regard to that application, have you had any ex parte communications that you need to disclose? And we'll start with Commissioner Kennard. No. 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 Thank you. And at the conclusion of this hearing, you're going to be asked to consider, again, two ordinances. First, the Atlas Amendment, and then the Comprehensive Plan Amendment. So the first is an ordinance of Citrus County, Florida, political subdivision in the state of Florida, amending Citrus County land use atlas map by redesignating approximately 2.6 acres from the Coastal and Lakes Residential District to the Coastal and Lakes Resident, excuse me, the Coastal and Lakes Commercial District with a planned unit development for covered storage and a telecommunications tower. Providing for conflicts, providing for modification that may arise from consideration at public hearing, providing for severability, providing for scrivener's errors, and providing for an effective date. And the comprehensive plan amendment is an ordinance of Citrus County, Florida, political subdivision of the state of Florida, amending the Citrus County future land use map by redesignating approximately 2.6 acres from the low intensity coastal and lakes district to the coastal and lakes commercial district. Providing for applicability, providing for severability, providing for inclusion, providing for scrimmage error, providing for modification that may arise from consideration at public hearing, and providing for an effective date. Thank you very much. I believe much. Dr. Wilburn is here for the applicant. The applicant ready? Good evening, commissioners. Mike Wilburn, local engineering, PO Box 938, Floral City, Florida. You have the site plan in front of you. This is approximately 2.6 acres. I purchased this property last year uh, with the intent of the plan that is before you. There is an existing structure and an existing garage that was built in the 50s that you can kind of see in the dashed area on your screen that is proposed to be removed. Um, at the time of the PDC hearing, there was no public comment. However, I, I think I received one today and one yesterday. Uh, so I might be a day off, but I'll address those towards the end of uh, my presentation. Uh, in the staff report, you'll find that there is no sanitary sewer nor potable water. Uh, this site, as you can see, it doesn't have an office. It won't have any type of facilities that would warrant city water or city sewer. This is strictly a storage facility. Um, so solid waste is not an issue either. We are asking for a few deviations. One thing I want to, a few things I want to point out. Uh, first, in going through the staff report access management with FDOT, um, because this is a, a personal project to me, I've kind of done some homework prior to this that I wouldn't normally have done. Um, and DOT, the, there is a currently an access point, which you see there, that is the access point to the house. It is 25 feet wide. Uh, the minimum is 24. And so uh, FDOT is satisfied with that access point, so there's no change that would need to be made there. Uh, no turn lanes or anything like that because of the traffic count. It's actually a lower intensity use uh, per day traffic than a single family residence would be, according to the uh, latest IT trip generation manual. I am asking for a deviation on the impervious ratio. The impervious ratio in Coastal Lakes Commercial is 50%. I'm asking for 51.7, I believe. And the reason is, as you can see, I don't have a clicker, but on the on closest to the DRA, I have 40 foot aisle there. That is to help provide a better turning radius. I could fit it within the 50% if you guys deem that necessary, um, but I was hoping to gain that 30 inches, which is what that equates to, uh, to help with vehicle flow. 
Um, the property is does have a portion of floodplain um, on it, which is a comment that I'll address shortly. Um, and, DO, and DOT as well as uh, Swift Mud has uh, made comments about that as well. Coast Lakes Commercial allows a 0.3 floor area ratio, and I'm asking for a 0.27. I am asking also for a deviation in the landscaping, which you guys have heard many times in previous projects. Our land development code requires a, an additional buffer between the development and the DRA. And so that is a deviation that we are requesting not to have to put in that um, self-contained buffer between the asphalt that you see there in a tan yellowish color and the drainage retention area. Another deviation I'm requesting, and you don't really have I believe you'll probably see it in Ms. Katu's presentation, but instead of a metal structure, like we've seen several other projects do in the county, especially on 19, I'm proposing to do a rough sawn timber construction, more conventional, so it would look more like a lodge. Um, Mr. Gibson with J.M. Gibson Mechanical has done something similar, um, not very far from here, uh, and it, it is very eye appealing. So rather than a, a metal structure with a flat roof, this will have a true 312, 412 pitch uh, rough big columns, um, rough big posts, I should say, and then stone stack columns uh, to try and spruce it up to try and meet facade. Uh, and like she already mentioned, it is an open facility. It is not self-contained. It's not climate controlled. Uh, it's just strictly covered parking. So uh, trying to do our best with that in terms of meeting the facade requirements and staff, I believe, is recommending approval of that. Uh, the conditions as you find them, we are perfectly fine with. Um, PDC already voted for this. I believe the vote was five to nothing. And so I wanna just spend a moment, if I could, addressing the comments that I received yesterday and this morning. Uh, the first comment I would like to address is dated 6-9, and it is a handwritten note, and it talks about just being an objective to the rezoning of the land. And I'd like to point out that there's no specific objection to the use, the proposed use, it's just simply of the rezoning. And then also uh, this person individual concludes that it won't change the quality of life. I recently uh, was about to purchase four pieces of property that are directly across the street from this to develop into single family homes. And I came in, um, to the knowledge that those lots were very small and because of the waterfront setbacks and because of the uh, changing water tables that those lots were not really buildable. And so I would submit to you that many of the properties in and around this area are very small in nature. And a lot of people have boats. This was established as a fishing community across the street from here. Uh, so there's dozens and dozens and dozens of lots that are very small. And so a, a facility like this where you're able to store your boat, maybe you're able to store your camper, I, I do think that that would improve the quality of life in the area. And also, uh, the nearest cell tower is about two and a half miles away. It's antiquated, it has old software, it doesn't have 5G, and they're not gonna replace, um, per the cell phone tower providers, they're not gonna replace that on an antiquated tower. And so it will provide a uh, better signal and better service for the area as well. And then I have another letter here, public comment dated June 7th. And this person raises three issues. The first one I, th I think helps uh, the cost for this project. And it basically says that the area over the last 19 years has changed drastically from a residential to a more developed four lane highway commercial use. Um, they also talk about the flooding of the area. And as you can see, there's a significant portion of this property that is designated for water compensation. And so I'd like to speak to that for just a moment. I have already applied uh, for a swift mud permit. I've already had geotech come out and drill. Um, and so from the site's perspective, this is an open basin, which means they're required to hold back 25% or 25 year storm, uh, which we do. And in the post development, the stage volume, because there's floodplain compensation involved, uh, the stage volume is actually less on this property and on the adjacent properties because of the floodplain compensation that we're providing for. Uh, so the, the, this person who had a public comment on June 7th, uh, who, is, who has a natural worry about, is my property gonna be affected by this development? Number one, Swift Mud would not allow that to be approved. But number two, uh, it has been engineered and designed to actually reduce the amount of stormwater that is on, her, on this person's site. And also, not, and not only the stormwater will be reduced, but the actual floodplain in a 100-year event will be reduced should SWIFTMUD approve what is before them right now, which um, is still pending approval. 
Um, and then the last thing I probably shouldn't mention because I don't, I don't know that we uh, have to worry about this, but the public health, um, the list of items here that are at risk for public health, I just want to point out that the American Cancer Society has still to date stated that there's no correlation between cell towers and cancer. And in addition to that, many, many studies have already proven and have been validated and confirmed that uh, the amount of RF waves that come from a microwave are greater than that which comes from cell towers. In addition to that, one of the reasons the cell tower that's two and a half miles away is antiquated is because the cell companies now are desiring to have smaller towers in, multiple, in, in more places rather than big towers. Um, so the cell output signal, the RF signal of these new towers is actually less because they wanted to be more populated. Um, that, that addresses the public comments and that, that kind of gives you an overview. I know Ms. Katu is about to go, but before I sit down, is there any questions that I could answer for you guys? Any questions, board members, the applicant? I would just, uh, a couple things, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure, because you talked about swift mud, dealing with the flood potentials and so on. Um, and, and again, I guess whenever the tower is permitted or whatever, it's going to have to meet all current standards and everything for that. So that is not so much a zoning issue right now as what, as we always find out, who, whatever they do is going to have to meet the current standards for whatever they try to do if and when the zoning is changed. Yes. Okay. And I'll, since you brought it up, I also mentioned during the PDC, and, and Ms. Katu may can speak to this also, um, the cell tower in the DRA is, is arbitrary. It could be in the middle of the site. It could be on the opposite side. That doesn't matter to me. Uh, so if, if through public comment or through your discretion and desire, you want me to move that, I have no, I have no problem doing that. And um, the only thing, too, according to this, you're, the, it's already uh, uh, commercial across the street, literally, right, yes. from this, from this yes. location. Are there any adjacent <coughs> homes? Uh, obviously, there's one on one side. What about the other side? The other side is a church that mm -hmm. we built um, in 1997 and then again remodeled in 2002. There's a parsonage and the church property. Okay, but as you said, this is going to be basically outdoor covered storage, right? That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> That's my only questions, and nobody else says anything? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go to, are you ready? Okay, um, this is a proposal to change approximately 2.6 acres um, to the Coastal Lakes Commercial District with a planning and development for open storage and a cell tower. These are the two structures that uh, Mr. Wyvern talked about that will be removed. These are residential structures on the site. And this is an aerial he did talk about um, one, one lot over to the east on the right of this picture there is a church um, there is some commercial across the street and auto repair and a shed sales site and then the rest is residential so taking a look at zoning um, you can see the coastal lakes commercial across 44 and you can't really see the church because it's in the CLR property but it is one lot over to the right side on that picture so this is the site plan that he talked about um, there are a few deviations that he talked about um, Correctly, the 52% impervious surface, obviously they have to meet permitting for stormwater, so that would be addressed. Um, as far as for the cell tower, there are some de a deviation requested for the buffer. Cell towers usually require a type D buffer with a wall, and he's asking without a wall. That's perfectly fine for a lot of other cell towers. Staff had no concern with that one. Another one is the facade. Now this is what he's proposing um, for an open storage area. This is actually quite quite good. It's not metal. It's uh, got stone columns. Um, no concerns with this. I think this is a, a, about as pretty as you can make an open storage look. Um, he is proposing in one of the conditions, condition number six, is there still would be 50% of the frontage on 44 would still have foundation landscaping. So he's going to have to figure out how to make that happen. Um, but other, other than that, the Planning and Development Review Board, um, Planning and Development Commission, excuse me, reviewed this on April 7th. I'm, going, I'm dating myself now. I reviewed this on April 7th and did recommend approval, and the conditions are in your staff report. There were 11 conditions. 11. Okay. Any questions for staff? Uh, I should ask the applicant, are you okay with all 11 conditions? Yes, sir. Okay, you're good with those? Okay, good. Okay, well at this time then we'll open this to public input. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone speak in favor? Third and final time, anyone speak in favor? Is there anyone here opposed to this application? Yes, please come forward. <coughs> yeah, please come forward and 
If you would, uh, we'll give you three minutes to speak. Jeff, would you mind doing that? And uh, if you would, sometime, if you give us your name and when you're done, if you would fill out one of those green cards for the clerk there whenever you finish, that'd sure. be great. Thank you very much. I'm Shirley Schaefer. I live in Eden Gardens. My neighbors asked me to come. Uh, they were concerned about uh, property values and they were concerned about health um, with the tower. And then they backpedaled on the health. They said no one's going to understand the health thing. Um, listening to the gentleman's presentation, I feel that this would be an asset to the community. And so, but I don't want to go back and tell my neighbors that I was scared <laughs> to stand up and speak. <laughs> so, so I did speak, but, but <laughs> I hope you'll vote yes on this. <laughs> so. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Is there anyone else opposed to this uh, that would like to speak? Yes, sir. Yes, Commissioners. Mark Avery. Uh, we own property in that area. I'm not so much as opposed to what they're saying. The question I have is when he says about the entrance going in there. Now, we've got a commercial property across the street and you can hear people blowing the horn all the time with customers coming into our property is he going to have it set back far enough to where the people can actually pull in before they enter is it going to be a lot gate well it, it, ask your question and we give the applicant a chance to, okay. re, to uh, rebut so <laughs> or answer your first question. time I've done this so <laughs> okay um, okay because they've got to be able to get whatever they're bringing in there off of 44 because that's going to be a danger. I see it every day we're open. Uh, that was my big concern. Uh, did have a couple of other friends of mine that are in the area that had mentioned about the 5G tower and how they're going to glow at night. <laughs> and it's all because they don't know. I mean, that's just the fact. So. Uh, that's all I have to say. I just wanted to make sure that there's an entrance that's far enough to make it safe yep. for people traveling on 44. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Is there you. anyone else here to speak in opposition to this ordinance? Yes, sir. Please come up. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jeff Jones. I live in the affected area. <clears throat> People that I know tell me that these uh, towers, 5G towers, might make you glow, and I don't want to glow. So I'm here to let you know that I'm opposed because I'd rather, uh, uh, just, just because people say that uh, everything is healthy and fine and we've done these studies, um, in my opinion, doesn't necessarily make it true. So uh, I'd rather them build a tire somewhere else so I don't potentially glow. That's all I got. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you need one of these? Please, before you leave, you fill out for the clerk so she has that information. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, appreciate you being here. Is there anyone else to speak in opposition to this application? Anyone else to speak in opposition? Third and final time, anyone speak in opposition? Okay, we're gonna close the public comment and we'll give the applicant the opportunity to answer questions or rebut anything that they are. So. All right. First comment, I'd like to thank Ms. Shaker for coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second comment regarding the gentleman who was concerned about the um, driveway and access. If you look on the site plan, you'll see that before the gate, the approach is about 70 feet. Um, so there's more than enough room for a vehicle to completely be removed from the Highway 44. And then, uh, so, and again, FDOT will monitor that. FDOT would have to approve that access, um, and it would have to meet their standards. And then to Mr. Jones, who lives in an area, or sorry, in the affected area, um, I know I mentioned public stuff, public health in my in my presentation, but I'm not sure that. Madam Attorney, I'm not sure that that's an area that we can discuss. Or yeah, discuss. Again, I mean, uh, we're dealing with zoning issues. Uh, you're talking more about a land use issue, I believe, when you talk about the cell tower itself, which is going to have to meet its own 
requirements with whatever goes out there. Is that not correct? Am I not correct in that? Nope. Easy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, and, and again, I, not to get too much involved in this, but if it gets down to, you know, placement of that tower, when you said you're not set in stone one place or another, that's something that you maybe could work with maybe folks in the neighborhood if, if it was further in the back or something, you could probably work with them on that or something. I mean, I don't want to get into the weeds on that, but that's something sure. they know they could talk to you but about, right? The reason I chose there is because it's... Uh, It'll be the least visible from right. the road. If I move it to the center, you'll see it through the roadway aisles. Right. Okay. Very good. Okay. Commissioners, any questions of staff, the applicant, or comments on anything you heard? Um, so with that said, we would. what is your pleasure on T2? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I'm confident substantial evidence. I move to approve. Uh, CPA dash A dash P D dash twenty two dash O five A and B. A and B. Okay. With uh, with the eleven conditions. Eleven conditions. Okay. Second. And we have okay. So Commissioner Cryan makes a motion. A second by Commissioner Kennard. We've had. Uh, is there any further board discussion? Yeah. yeah. The only thing I'd say is I you know I, I I like these kind of projects where folks talk with the people in the neighborhood, listen to what they have to say, uh, try to work out issues. Sometimes. You know, it's just being good neighbors, and so I think that's to everybody's benefit when that kind of stuff happens. Um, so, with that said, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes for zero. Thank you very much, board. I know it's been a long day, but you guys are exceptional workers. Appreciate you being here, and we're adjourned. <laughs>